The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. This is the new media center in Arizona Stadium on the campus of the University of Arizona. Welcome to the great Southwest, Tucson, Arizona. It's a Pac-10 showdown between the Bruins of UCLA and the Wildcats of Arizona. of UCLA, their first road trip and Pac-10 play coming here, and here they are. They're 2-0 in league play, tied for first with USC. Terry Donahue last week became the Pac-10's all-time winningest coach, and his Bruins have been tough on the road. They've won seven straight over the past two years. The Wildcats of Arizona are 2-1. and one. They're one game back of UCLA and USC. And they had a week off to get ready for this game as Dick Tomey, in his third year as coach of the Wildcats, lost to the Bruins here last year, 24-3. Everybody, I'm Gary Bender. The past five years, Arizona's had the third best winning percentage in the Pac-10. But Dick Tomey wants to take the Wildcats to the next level. And to do that, he knows he has to beat the Los Angeles schools, UCLA and USC. And today he thinks an outstanding opportunity is given to him as he tries to change the power structure in the league. Terry Donahue senses all of this, and he feels a sense of urgency. He feels the Wildcats have been backed into a corner as they can ill afford to lose two conference games this early in the season. Nobody knows more about Dick Tomey and Terry Donahue than my broadcasting partner, Dick Vermeil. Both of them were assistants with Dick when they went to the Rose Bowl and upset Ohio State in 1976. Dick, tell me about these two guys. Well, Gary, as equal as these two coaches are in ability as football coaches, they're direct opposites in personalities. Terry Donahue is the more serious, a little more conservative in his approach to the game, the impeccable dresser. Dick Tomey, he could care less if his tie matches his shirt. A little more wide-open guy. When you coach against Tomey, you better expect the unexpected. As we come to this game, Dick, I sense that both clubs are still searching for their identity on offense. Well, last year UCLA had Troy Aikman, and everybody defensed him, the passing attack, and allowed them to run maybe a little bit better than they actually were. This year, they're shutting down the run, putting the pressure on the freshman quarterback, Brett Johnson, to get it done, and I think pretty quick that philosophy is going to have to change. What about Arizona? Arizona's been a wishbone team, a quarterback option. The defenses have been forcing the quarterback to keep the ball too much. Look for Arizona to come with a little eye formation today. UCLA has won the last four games. The last time Arizona defeated the Bruins was right here in 1983. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of this Pac-10 showdown between the Wildcats and Bruins in just a moment. Crowd of over 50,000. Let's go to the sideline now for the other member of our broadcast team. Here's Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. It has been nothing but hot here in Tucson, and today is no different. The temperature is over 94, 97 degrees, and it's a record high. And you can imagine how hot it is down here on the field. It's 102 degrees. Both the trainers for the respective teams are very concerned about the heat. They started pre-hydrating the players last night. That means they started to really force the fluids last night throughout the entire game today. And also, there are many nursing stations set around the stadium to make sure that the fans are taken care of. So, Gary, we're going to have to keep our eyes not only on the players, but on the fans as well. What about the broadcasters, hey, Cheryl? I've got a canteen behind me. I'm taking care of them. <laughs> okay. UCLA won the toss. They deferred, and so they'll be kicking off. Brad Del Uso is going to be kicking off, a junior out of San Diego. And back deep will be Michael Bates along with Errol Sapp. Now, we had heard that Michael Bates and had a virus when he woke up this morning. They were concerned about him, but he's back for the opening kickoff. The virus has disappeared by the time you get to the locker room. <laughs> UCLA ready to go, and we're underway. Line drive. There'll be no return on this one. Well, he banged that one. Did he ever? And at the 20-yard line, the Wildcats will have it. There is Ron Veal, the starting quarterback. Veal as a starter is 10-4-2 and two in his two-plus years for the Arizona Wildcats. Only throwing 39% completion, however. Looking now at his offensive backfield, Eldridge, Hampton, 
in the backfield along with McGill. They're going to go from the eye from time to time today. A little change. And up front, Brandon and Parker, the leaders. They're the seniors on the right side of that offensive line. As you can see, they come out eye strong right. This is a new wrinkle now for the Wildcats. Give straight ahead to Eldridge, and Eldridge has a seven-yard gain. It'll bring up second and three. Mike Lodish, number 94, made the stop. Let's look defensively at the Bruins. Lodish leading that defensive forward troop very well. He's joined by Kelly and Bryson. The linebackers, Keaton, Davis, Argo, and Patton. Meet Shaw is out of the ball game. They had hoped he would be able to start. Turner, along with Darby, the returning starters from a year ago in the secondary. Secondary is a little Fidetimi. bit late. <laughs> Lining up there, Gary. Old gun Fidetimi is split out to the near side of the field. In motion goes McGill. Pitch comes back to Eldridge. He's got the first down. He's out to the 40-yard line. Stacy Argo up to make the stop for the Bruins. Let's look now what Arizona wants to do offensively. Well, Rip Shearer, the offensive coordinator, said the number one thing they have to do with their style of offense is be efficient on first down, stay out of the second and third and long situations with their style attack. Not a great passing team. Dick Tomey, in his third year, his club last year going 7-4, and four, winning their final three games of the year. Kip Lewis is split out now, the single wide out as McGill goes in motion. Eldridge again. 215-pounder, senior out of Tucson, brings it across the 45 to the 46. Argo and Turner combine on the stop, a gain of eight. Let's look at what the Bruins want to do defensively. Well, Bobby Fields, the defensive coordinator, says, hey, number one thing we've got to do is take away their inside run. They better get started because they're running inside. Terry Donahue, the winningest coach all time in Pac-10 play, was 72 wins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you see them lining up in an eye formation, that deep tailback. That's the first time in a couple of years they've really got going to this style of attack. First time for sure this year. This time the short man, McGill. McGill's got the first down. So this new wrinkle is working for Dick Tomey. Eric Turner eventually made the stop. First down at the UCLA 45. That extra week of preparation really helps a football team prepare. As you watch now, the big fullback number 35 leads through, gets a good block in there, and there goes Reggie McGill for a nice gain. The extra week allows you to put in some things that you wouldn't have time to do if you just had your normal week of preparation. Big advantage for Arizona. Kyle Jan, Kip Lewis, wide out, split left and right. This time, I strong right on a first down. McGill in motion. On the option is Veal. He keeps it. And he is very close to another first down. Dion Lambert, the cornerback, up to make the stop. Gary, I think Arizona is going to like this uh, addition to their offense because it's going to allow them to determine which running back they want to have the ball in their hands. As you take a look at this coming from the end zone, you'll focus your attention to the right. The fullback goes inside. Now the defenders are blocked right there. The ball's good. Uh, fake pitch. Good job of turning back up inside. See that little fake with the left hand? That many times the defender will overreact and go take that uh, trail back. That was the first down to the 35-yard line. Lewis is split to the near side. The Wildcats, initial series of the game that started from their own 20. Fake pitch. Veal, they didn't fool anybody. Gets rid of it, though. Complete to Lewis. And Lewis has another first down to the 20-yard line. Matt Darby over, but a very good job by Veal. Lodish was not fooled on this play, Dick, but he no, still had poise to throw the ball. What he's doing with the action of the quarterback here is facing, faking the toss away. Now watch the quarterback as he reverse pivots, and he's going to toss like it's a flow play to the left. Now this pulls the defense that way. Now he comes up, no blocker, just a scramble situation, bootleg situation, and hits the little quick pass out there for the nice game. Gain of 16 just inside the 20-yard line. This is Griffith, the tight end, aligning himself to the near side. Eldridge to the 10. And a He's score. to take it in. Touchdown, Arizona. Arizona coming in, second in the conference in rushing, and boy, did they rush the ball well on this particular series. Everything they did was brand new in their attack. UCLA will make adjustments in between series now, standardize what they're going to do, make the adjustments, and probably slow them down this next series. 19-yard touchdown run by Eldridge. He had 45 yards on four carries on that drive. Doug Fath, outstanding place kicker, comes in. John Neese will hold. Kenneth McPeters, the snapper. The ball is down. Fath's kick is up. And it's a 7-0 game. 
So the opening series, a very successful one, covering 80 yards. And this 19-yard run giving the Wildcats the early advantage. Eldridge with the touchdown. They were telling us, Dick, that he's really got some confidence now after the severe ankle injury. No question. That was his first touchdown of the year. Focus your attention on the big left guard, 67. 300-pounder there. He gets just enough brush block at the point of attack as he pulled across there to open up that big crease. Look for UCLA to tighten up that inside defense. They've been defensing the option all week in preparation. This is a different style attack. You can see the numbers on the drive. Well, they have fired the first volley. Yes, <laughs> they have. In an impressive way, I might say. Well, last year in here, they moved the ball very well in the first drive, and they dropped the touchdown pass. That was Kip, Kip Lewis. Kip Lewis dropped the post pattern. Nice will kick off instead of Pfaff. Ready to go, 7 to nothing. the Wildcats. Brian Brown is back deep, and he's going to bring this one up. Out to the 22-yard line, and UCLA will start there. Brett Johnson, the redshirt freshman quarterback. And he has created some excitement in Westwood. Great touch and has uncanny ability and poise for as young as he is. Estwick's his fullback. Wills his second consecutive start. Far more than Arbuckle starting for the first time at tight end. Up front, veteran line. Four starters back from a year ago. Cornish, the All-American candidate at center. From the 22, the Bruins with their first snap of the game. Sean Wills. And Wills goes for three to the 25. Anthony Smith, number 94, was over there first to make the stop. Gary. There he is. Is he excited, Eldridge? <laughs> hey, the game didn't over, kids. So we're celebrating. Well, he's from Tucson, Diablo High School. He's got to be excited playing before not only the college crowd, but his old high school buddies here. Well, he also had that terrible ankle injury, you know, and he's just really 100% now. Second down. Let's make it eight yards to go. It's Wills again. No place to go. Back there's Anthony Smith, and Smith's got it. Smith, the transfer from the University of Alabama, as he helped the Wildcat defense. Take a look at the linebackers as they flow on this play. It's a deep toss. There they are, Singleton, Case, Salem, and Alexander. And then Hammer, Schmidt, Holt, Lewis, and Geyer, the secondary. So the loss now will bring up third down and 11 yards to go. Smith has been really an impact player for Arizona. Oh, I know it. And he, he's a big guy that can run. All these guys can for Arizona. They think the front seven's the fastest they'll face this year. That's what Terry Donahue told us. Back to throw, Brett Johnson. Over the middle, nobody there. So all of a sudden, UCLA's got to kick the football. Terry Donahue's team has won 10 of their last 11 games on the road. Seven straight. They've been tough, but right now find themselves down 7 to nothing. Arizona has been good over the last few years of blocking punts. You really have to do a good job in, in disciplining your protection. 34 blocks to be exact. Kurt Maggio will go back and punt. Darrell Lewis is back deep for the Wildcats. Good rush put on. Got very close to it. Lewis is going to let it hit, and that's going to cost him. That's a mistake. See, now he lost at least 15, 16 yards there. He should have fielded that ball. So the line of scrimmage for Arizona will be the 18. That will go as a 51-yard punt. And Ron Veal, his troops leading 7 to nothing, will come out offensively. Did you know in 1976, UCLA upset top-ranked Ohio State in the Rose Bowl? This picture in 75 is the same guy that upset Ohio State in 76. Dick Vermeil, my broadcasting partner, the head coach at UCLA, and two of those assistants. Look at those hairstyles. Look at those Dick guys. Dick and Terry Donahue. They're the only guys that have aged. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> Part of that staff. There were some other guys on there. Jim oh, Mora. Jim Mora. You're not too bad a coach. No, yet. sir. Carl Peterson, the president of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's here this weekend. Bill McPherson, defensive coordinator at 49ers. His son's on the UCLA team now. From the 18-yard line now. Arizona with their second snap offensively. I should say second series. And Eldridge out to the 25. 
<laughs> they might end up liking this attack and Ooh. forget the wishbone. Eldridge really has to like it. It gives him a chance to find the open seams, the little holes. Well, he gets the ball right away, where on the option, he goes down the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback flips, flips it to him late, and it doesn't allow him to go ahead and tuck the ball away and become a you know an innate ball carrier. He has to stay on track and take what they give him. He already has 52 yards. He had 107 yards last year against UCLA. Second down. Three yards to go. This time they go to the short man, the fullback Mario Hampton, and he's got the first down. See, the other thing that happens when you mix up your offense like this is you still force the defense to be concerned about when you're going to run the option. And that ties you down. I'm responsible for this guy, I'm responsible for this guy, and I'm responsible for this guy. And it, it gives you problems. I would think also, Dick, that it really takes some pressure off of Ron Field. Oh, yeah. A few weeks ago, they had a 65-snap day of offense, and he was responsible for making a decision on 52 of them. Too much pressure on him. Yep. First down at the 29. Kip Lewis is split out at the top of the field. High wing left this time. The wing man is McGill, and he's got the ball. Breaks one tackle. Check that. That is not Gill. It's Errol Sapp, a freshman out of Carson, California, who hasn't carried that much. An exciting player. He was the Los Angeles City Player of the Year last season. Taking a look at the down four at UCLA and the problems that they have, you can see the little hole that closes up right there. Sap keeps on going, and then the pursuit will come inside out and make the play. But uh, they have some problems. But you can rest assured that Bobby Fields and the defensive staff will solve those problems. Second down, five. Sap with great confidence for a true freshman from the 34-yard line. Deal to Eldridge. Eldridge hammers it to the 40. Good second effort, and that's a first down. Craig Davis, who leads the Pac-10 in tackles, the inside linebacker, met him helmet to helmet. But Eldridge picking up yet another first down. Craig Davis, you said, led the Pac-10. Last week, he had 19 tackles versus Arizona State. And he is a Tucson native. He's yeah. one of those guys that got away. He's got to be a little bit sore yet from making 19 hits last week. Yeah. That's a bunch. He's averaging over 13 a game. Yes. Had 102 of them last year. First down now from the 40. 7 to nothing. the Wildcats with the lead. That's Hampton, the fullback. Having trouble staying on his feet, but still getting pretty good yardage. They're right now doing very well on first down. And doing well inside. Offensively, their goal was to be efficient on first down. They're doing that. Defensively, their goal was to take away the inside run. They're not doing that right now. So that gives the edge to Arizona. Boy, Dick, you're really setting pretty when you have a second and five. She was setting pretty right there, too. <laughs> From the 46-yard line. I'm surprised by you. Kip Lewis split out. Also, Olga and Fedidemi at the top. High, strong left. Neal on the option. Wants to pitch. He does to Eldridge. Eldridge got some running room. He's to the 35. He could go. Eldridge is to the 10. Eldridge with his second touchdown of the day. the quarterback comes down the line of scrimmage he fakes into the fullback that freezes the linebackers allows him to get out there he makes a night cut inside and now he's just using his innate running skills and now speed you can see the ankle is not bothering him in any way and he appeared to be 100 percent healthy on the practice field thursday he wasn't limping 100 percent he's also over 100 yards already in this game that was a 54 yard run what a start for arizona fast point after makes it 14 to nothing so Arizona, realizing this is a golden opportunity to move to the next level, have really made a bold statement early in this football game. 14 to nothing they lead. 7.44 still left in the first quarter. Overlooking the city of Tucson and the University of Arizona campus, A Mountain has been one of Arizona's strongest athletic traditions. For over 75 years, freshmen have ascended the mountain to paint the large A made of stone and concrete. David Eldridge is off to some start. Seven carries, 112 yards, and two touchdowns. 
And I can't emphasize uh, you know, enough is that this guy comes off reconstructive ankle surgery in the spring to be running like this today. A great salute to our medical profession. Dick, we have something interesting right here. We could have an onside kick. Now you say, why would you onside leading 14 to nothing? That's Dick Tomey. <laughs> you do it when you least expect it. And Tomey can do those things. Now see, he lines up tight. He got one against Stanford like that. They When they were lined up tight for kickoff, Stanford was spread out, so they kicked it. That's what you said in the opening. He's a gambler. He'll do, he'll do it. So Nice looks like it's a conventional kickoff. But we got to be alert to that every time because they may do it. Boy, he got into this one, didn't he? Yes, he did. Nice Both kick. teams doing a good job kicking off. And now from the 20, UCLA, who took three snaps and punted the last time, will have the ball. But right now, let's take a break. Let's go to New York. Here's Roger Twible. Thank you very much, Gary. At Ames, Iowa, Colorado, an easy time, but a bad situation with Eric Bieniemy, a broken right tibia, and the young man with nine touchdowns coming into the game is lost indefinitely as Colorado beats Iowa State 52-17. Let's go back to Gary Bender. Roger, thank you very much. A concern, Terry Donahue, and rightfully so, his team trailing down 14 to nothing, and when you're on the road, boy, you don't want to get started like this. No, and you know, the thing is that Arizona has only scored 14 points in the first quarter of the entire year so far. Now they have 14 in this, this ball game. But Terry is not a panic guy. He has a lot of poise, and therefore the squad will, will demonstrate that in their performance as the game goes on. He will not panic. 14th year as head coach. From the 20-yard line, the Bruins still looking for some success offensively. Second time to get the football, trailing 14 to nothing. Brad Johnson, play action fake. This is what he's good at, a scrambling, but he doesn't get away that time. Chris Singleton was over there. They feel Chris Singleton is the best linebacker in the country. Well, they say he's the best football player on defense in the Pac-10. Now, you know, I'm, he's going to have to prove that as the year goes on, but he is an outstanding young man. He's an identical twin. His brother Kevin diagnosed last July having leukemia and uh, great support. They're so identical, the coaches can't hardly tell them apart. They used to wear their, their numbers on a pin around their neck, right? On a chain. Right. Second down, 11. Johnson on target. Beautifully thrown ball and a catch by Scott Miller. Miller, his high school teammate, former junior college standout. Well, it's tough when you're friends. We asked Terry Donahue what it's like coaching against his friend, Dick Tomey. Well, you know, I'm getting more used to it with Dick in the league. And, of course, Rich Brooks has been in the league a long time. And they were both on our first staff at UCLA. And Dick and I go back all the way to the University of Kansas with Pepper Rogers back in 1967. So, uh, you know, I'm getting used to it. I don't particularly enjoy that. I've said that publicly a lot of times. I, I'd rather compete against people I don't know very well or, or that I'm not particularly friends with. Uh, just because um, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, and, and it's hard when that happens uh, when you have friendship involved. Well, I'll tell you, his friend Dick Tomey certainly is not letting his friendship get in the way of anything. They're leading 14 to nothing. However, UCLA starting to put it together. That pass a moment ago, a 17-yard completion, and now a two-yard gain, second and eight. That was Wills on the carry and Donnie Salem on the stop. Scott Miller goes in motion. And they're changing the play as now rolling to the far side is Brett Johnson. That's Miller. He wants to hit, overthrows everybody, incomplete. It'll bring up a third down. Darrell Lewis defending on the play. Here's the goal now of the Bruins. They want to really mix it up. Well, they want to control the ball with a mixed attack. Now, meaning that they wanted to throw the high percentage pass on the rundowns, complete them, and keep it moving that way. And uh, right now, they're not doing a real good job of that, though they did hit their good slant pattern. The guy standing by Terry Donahue is Rick Neuheisel, a former Bruin quarterback, played in the USFL, and now has helped with the offense. Both of these coaches have hired former players to coach for them on their staff. They're very loyal people. Third and eight. A lot of trouble being chased by Anthony Smith. 
And this is exactly what concerned UCLA is a quickness up front defensively by Arizona. And they, they want to stay out of the third and long situations. And Anthony Smith, I walked by him the other day. I said, Anthony, are you ready for a real battle? And he said, I'm going to keep my pads low and get after him. Well, he's done that. <laughs> so again, UCLA has to punt the football. Maggio standing at the 19-yard line. Maggio has really been an improved punter. He had a bad spring and came back this fall, and he's been outstanding. In fact, they even spent some time trying to recruit another punter in between spring and fall, but this guy came back and just did a great job. And he did a fine job on this one. Back is Lewis at the 15. So at the 26, Arizona will have it for the third time. Thus far, the Wildcats had things going their way. That's a 52-yard punt, an 11-yard return. Arizona Stadium in the great Southwest, 14 to nothing. Arizona leads UCLA. I'm Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Cheryl Miller. And Dick, it's amazing. Arizona has been so efficient, they haven't even had a third down today. And I think that all goes back to having the week off. Not only were they able to prepare with a new offensive approach, but they allowed to freshen up their players by taking a few days off. And Eldridge is off to a big day thus far. Deal on the option for the Wildcats, and he's not going to go anywhere this time. Good reaction that time. Satupi Tuala out of Azusa, California. One of those outstanding names that we work with as we get ready for this broadcast. You'll see him at the right corner of your screen, number 66. He steps down, he next, nice job coming off the blocks, wins in, inside out, and makes that play. That's how you have to play that ball. When the quarterback comes down that close to the line of scrimmage, you get penetration, you'll make the play. Good job there, Satupe. It's a transfer from Citrus Junior College. Kyle Jan and Lewis put out a loss of a yard. Second and 11. On the option this way, Veal. And he slips. Good and job by uh, Rosine. Yep, Keaton was over there, the junior out of Los Angeles. Did now, you? What's happening, Dick? Again, they're making Veal keep the football, and that's been the problem all year long. That's right, and uh, I, I think they ought to get back to those other running plays myself. <laughs> those didn't work as well, did they? They gained, what, one yard and two plays. Yeah. So the line of scrimmage now, the 28. Third down and nine. This is where Arizona has not been good. They've only com converted 24% of their third down situations. Prior to today, this is their first third down. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run. McGill in motion and Veal to throw. A lot of time. Over there is Lewis. Can't get to it. Kip Lewis, the intended receiver, and Michael Williams defending on the play. Veal throwing the only 39%. Last year, he completed 38 the thing is about him on the practice field, I noticed too, Gary, he throws a lot of balls high over the top of people. Uh, many times that's because you're just leaning back and not really following through with your throw, but he throws a lot of balls over the top of people. Strong arm. Coach Tony says he's one of the best deep passers he's ever seen. Didn't work there, though. And for the first time, Arizona's going to punt. Nice is back to punt the football. Mike Farr to receive it. Nice Hit punt. it high. Nice punt. Beautiful. Farr calling for the fair catch. Beautiful punt, and he'll have it inside the 25. So Nice and Pfaff really giving Arizona an outstanding kicking game. And the two of them work together. Nice holds for Pfaff. They spend a lot of time together. In fact, the night before the game, they come out and visualize how they're going to do everything. <laughs> I can believe it. Kickers all have little routines of their own. When they work, it helps their confidence. If they go through a routine and it doesn't work, they have to find a new routine. <laughs> Nisa's daddy, by the way, is an official in the NBA. That's right. This Brett Johnson, you know, just watching him for the first time, he reminds me of John Shira. Yep, you would know. You've been around him. Yes, sir. He reminds me of him. He's built like him. He has that look in his eye, that little spark about how he carries himself around the field. So UCLA looking for some success. Have first down possibilities now from the 24. Johnson, a little pressure, gets it off to Corwin Anthony, the tight end, and he has a gain of eight. Darren Case is over there, number 50, to make the stop. Well, let's get the other perspective. Let's go this time to Dick Tomey and ask him what it's like to coach against his friend, Terry Donahue. Well, you know, I, I used to say I like it, but I, I really, I think the pragmatics of coaching have gotten to me, and I, and you know, I don't enjoy it as much as I might have the first year because I think it was, it was kind of a novelty coaching against Rich and Terry, and and uh, but I, I think I think of it more just as UCLA against Arizona. I really don't think about 
Terry being there, because I really care about Terry. I like him a lot. We've been close friends for years and years and years. And if you really got into how much the game means to us and how much it means to them, I think that would really bother you. But so I really don't think about that anymore. That was Reggie Gaddis who reached up and batted down that pass of Brett Johnson's. He's going to bring up third down, still two yards to go. I, I wonder if the fact that the Arizona hasn't been successful in beating UCLA and turn down it yet influences his feelings. <laughs> they want to control the running game. They're controlling everything pretty well. The only real success has been that one 17 yard completion by UCLA. Paul Richardson's in now with Farr. Oh, and a big hit on Gaddis. Brown. Brown was hit by Gaddis. Gaddis, a backup defensive end from Pomona, California. Gaddis is the right left center of your screen. The defensive lineman, the ball will be tossed deep. Now, watch the defense instead of the ball carrier. You'll see him ricochet off the block. Right in the middle of the screen, he flashes up there, and Gaddis is better against the run than his core at that position, Reggie Johnson. That's why they had him in on that third and two, three situation. What a luxury they have. Maggio to pump the ball to Lewis. 2.09 left in the first quarter, 14 to nothing Arizona. Lewis lets this one hit again, but this one will go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. So the Wildcats have stymied the Bruins offensively, and they have the football once again, and Ron Veal will come in. A 14 to nothing lead for this Arizona team, a team who has really had two of the best back-to-back -back wins in the history of the school. When back-to-back, -back, they were able to defeat Oklahoma and Washington. Then they got ambushed in Oregon, and had a didn't... week off, and have really seemingly used it very constructively. And Oregon is a good football team. Don't just assume that Oregon's a pushover. They're a good football team, and every time you mention Oregon in the Pac-10, every coach that you visit with say they're one of the best coach teams in the Pac-10. Rich Brooks doing a good job up there. And friends of Tommy and Donahue. Yeah. Coach the 24 years. <laughs> Hale to Eldridge. Oh, oh nice play. This time of the Greg 25. Davis. That is Davis again. Davis has really become an outstanding player for this team. The only returning starting linebacker from last season. He wants to be an electrical engineer, and he lit that guy up. Did he, did he ever? <laughs> His birthday here is October 16th. From Canyon Del Oro High School here in Tucson. He was a running back as well as a linebacker here. You know, so if he intercepts one, he can run. Hard earned yardage that time of three. Second down. Eldridge again. And Eldridge just time for maybe two more. UCLA getting a little stiffer now. John Pryor, 64 out of Santa Barbara, a senior, was there to make the tackle. Pryor and Brian Kelly share that nose tackle spot. I tell you, the UCLA coaches have already made some adjustments, tightening up inside there. The defense coordinated by Bobby Fields, but he has a fine staff, and Larry Courier coaches the secondary. Larry Kerr, the inside linebackers. Mike Waffle, the defensive line coach. Uh, they're doing a fine job of making some adjustments. A third down now, third and five. That is Sapp in motion. Beal on the option. Pitches to Eldridge. He's got the corner, and he's got the first down. Boy, is he a load when he gets those shoulders turned up the field. First down to the 41. The whole key to that play was not so much the option. It was the block by the large wide receiver, Kyler Jan, number 81. He gets the block. As we take this, watch the quarterback as he comes down the line of scrimmage. Now look forward in front, right-hand corner of the screen. You'll see a block right we didn't get to see it. It didn't show. I'm sorry. But anyway, a wide receiver got a knockdown block that allowed him to turn that corner. Now 132 yards for Eldridge. First down, 15-yard gain. Field to throw. Oh, gun Fidetomy, the intended receiver, but double coverage, just nothing there. Carlton Gray and Eric Turner defending on the play. Here's the block we were talking about a minute ago. You'll see it right there, right in the center of the screen. Down those people go. When he you get him out there that much room, he, you can't stop. He's going to make the first down. Well, he is a 215-pounder. Don't forget that. So now it'll bring up second down. And again, Field trying to keep him on his passing, but really hasn't been close. <laughs> I watched him on the practice field. They, they've got another young quarterback we might see today that, that can throw the ball a little better. Receivers wide left, wide right. Field to throw again. Protection breaking down. He's going to take off to the 50 and I think he's got the first down yeah 
Yeah. Stacy Elliott caught up with him. And Beal, when you get him open in the open field, he loves to take off. Gary, if you if you were a 39% passer, as young Veal is a 39% passer, when you got back there, you might wish the defense took the coverage away, one less completion, and start running. Now here he goes. This guy can run. This is what his real strength is. Veal is. Says, Thanks, defense. You allowed me to make first down, and I might have thrown an incomplete trying to throw. I guess so. <laughs> Line of scrimmage now. That was a 10-yard pickup at the 48. Mikhail goes in motion. Elbridge again. 40-yard line. He has a 9-yard gain. That's the play they scored on earlier. And we have come to the end of the first quarter, and it's been all Wildcats. Arizona on top of UCLA, 14 to nothing. We've played 15 minutes here at Arizona Stadium, and the Wildcats have really liked what they've done thus far. They lead 14 to nothing as we begin quarter number two, second and two from the 40 of UCLA. The new offense, the new look has helped them. Neil getting off to that time, Reggie McGill, and very close to the first down. That's Craig Davis on the stop once again. That's the other game on ABC, Michigan and Michigan State. It is a first down. UCLA is going to have to get a little more play out of their nose guard position right now. They're, they're blocking him, uh, and he's not getting off. That's creating those little gaps up inside, and that's why Craig Davis is slanting over there to make the tackles. Paul Toffelmeyer, the brother of Joe, Outstanding player now with the Seattle Seahawks now playing center. On a first down, Elder. To the 35, again a gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Mike Lodish, who they consider to be the strongest defensive lineman in the school's history, was over there. Here's big Brian Kelly, number 65, the nose guard. Let's see what he does. And oh, Toffmeyer comes off him. We got two guys blocking him. No wonder he can't get in on the play. But he's holding his ground. He does a nice job. Boy, that is a thankless situation. Boy, isn't it? It, it is tough to play the nose guard position. You almost have to hate your girlfriend to play. <laughs> you, know? you will later anyway. Second down, eight yards to go. Leo giving off this time to Hampton, the fullback. And Hampton's about five yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up. Let's go down to Cheryl Miller now. Thank you, Gary. I'm sitting in the section known as the Knopf Holders. These are the kids from the eighth grade down who can buy, go to the YMCA and buy tickets for only for only a dollar. Now, is that a deal or what? Now, you guys, what do you think of the University of Arizona's football team? I tell you, Cheryl, you've got to bring those kids with you wherever we go. You've got some fans down there. Third and five now. Bill being chased, and the catch is made. It's Hampton to the 15. I think There's we got an flag. offensive lineman downfield. There's a flag on the play. Eric Turner made the stop. I think we have an offensive lineman downfield. I'm not sure. But... Taking a look at it right now, the fullback, Hampton, to the right center of your screen, See, he's going to sit in there. He's going to sit there, sit, pause. Now, watch him check down. See, now him check down, turn back, look for the ball. I can't see any linemen there. Oh, I see what the... Yeah, blocking in front, number 74 down there. Number 74, Glenn Parker. Down Parker. there too soon. You can't miss him. He's 6'6", 307 pounds. Yeah. If the ball's behind the line of scrimmage, you can block downfield. But if it's across the line of scrimmage, you can't. That's the first penalty of the game. Glenn, well, you know, you, see, you know, this is amazing. Arizona has gone through two games with one penalty in each game. That's Hello, great discipline. Here it is again. You'll see Five the big yards. offensive lineman. He's so big he can't hide at six foot six, 304 pounds, Glenn Parker. <laughs> Glenn, you can't sneak around down there. They can see you. Say the scouts like this guy. Oh, yeah, he's a prospect. You know, he told me the other day, he says, Coach, make sure you say hello to all my buddies at Golden West Junior College. Look hey, at hey, that. look at that. Look now, you'd look good in one of those. No, I wouldn't. No, wouldn't you? Wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> so the penalty negates the gain and brings up a third down now, nine yards to go. Kip Lewis to the near side. 
McGill goes in motion. Neal, very good in this situation, takes off. To the 30, to the 29, a couple of yards short of the first down, and Davis is there again. Field goal time, huh? Well, Pfaff has the distance, but they also have another kicker, Nice, who they think could even kick it further. Dick Tomey might go for it on fourth down. He's been doing that this year. He likes to go for fourth downs. They are 8 of 11 on fourth downs this year. Yes. That's an amazing stat. But normally, when you have an option offense, you can do more of that. Right, and normally when he goes for it on fourth down, he makes the plan on third down. I don't think he had time to do it that situation. And so Arizona is going to think about this one. Fourth down, still two, and Arizona uses their first timeout. 12-12 left in the first half. The Wildcats by 14. Arizona on a fourth down and a long yard coming up. Going to go for it, and Dick, the strategy here. Well, I think Coach Tommy feels that he's not going to beat UCLA with 14 points. And he's down here right now. He's going to eat up some clock and try to make the first down and go on and get the score. If he makes the first down, they stop him later, he can kick a shorter field goal. That's got to be his thinking. Me, I'd kick it. Also, he has great confidence in his defense. Fourth down, a long one. Eldridge, and he's got he it. it. Well, they ran at the right spot. They ran up behind the big 300-pound tackle, Glenn Parker. Taking a look at this. Look at the top right-hand side of your screen, the big offensive tackle and guard. They're coming off. There's a fullback kicking out. Big Nick Finneon Ganofo, number 61 at 310 pounds, pulling through the hole. How'd you like I said that? Boy, you're Finneon good at that. Ganofo. Huh? That an old gun fidetomy. I've been practicing all week. <laughs> Me too. I still don't get it right. First down at the 26, and so now they're 9 of 12 on fourth down this year. Tap in motion, might have a little trouble with the pitch Ooh, there. Nice defense. Got it to Eldridge and Patton. Marcus Patton over to make the stop. Well, you're talking about old gun fidetomy, and uh, I hope you people at home appreciate how long we spent on these kind of names right here. Ola Tide, old gun Say it. Old gun fidetomy. Old gun fidetomy. George Mala Ulu and Nick Finian Ganofo. Got to have a broad back to put that on your jersey. I'd call him Finny. Right? Well, they call Ogun Fidetomy double O. Yeah. Second down now, nine. Speaking of Ogun Fidetomy, he split out along with Kit Lewis. There's a quarterback draw. He's got a big play. Yes, he does. First down to the 11-yard line. Excellent call offensively. Very nice job by Rip Shear, the quarterback coach and quarterback coordinator of the offense. Very good call. Got him coming upfield. And that quarterback draw actually hits a little quicker than a normal draw. See him set back there? He plants. Upfield he goes. You see the lineman to the left of your screen working up to wall off people. You see Parker, number 74, getting a block right there. Craig Davis getting blocked. Good job. Good execution. So they're trying to keep this drive going after picking up a fourth and one. Now have a first down at the 11. Sap in motion. This is Bates, Michael Bates, the freshman out of Tucson. Got about a yard. Well, it's a big day on ABC tonight. Game one of the 1989 World Series as the National League champion San Francisco Giants travel all the way across the bay to meet the American League champion Oakland A's. And coverage begins at 8 Eastern tonight here on ABC. Scott Geraltz against Dave Stewart. That's the batteries. Boy, some big names in there. Mitchell and Canseco and Clark. It's going to be quite a World Series. Heck the Fall you, Classic. If you live on a hill in San Francisco, you can see the ball game from both uh, stadiums. Or go up in the blimp. <laughs> That's right. Second down now, eight. Sap. And Sap goes no place. Good play. defense there. Yes, sir. Good that penetration. Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly. They lost a yard on the play. Lodish was also there, but it was Kelly who made the initial penetration. Brian Kelly, an all-state academic student coming out of high school. Bright young man playing nose guard. Referee is James Springer indicating holding against Arizona. There's Kelly. He led it three times in football, two letters in basketball. It was a track man, put the shot, all-around athlete, and a fine student. You know what happened to him in the spring, though? He got chicken pox. I didn't know that that still existed. <laughs> Holding 
Offense, penalty is refused. Third down. Third down now for the Wildcats. 9.48 left in this first half. 14 to nothing, Arizona. Well, the big thing here now is for Veal to not turn the ball over or take a sack. Don't, I mean, throw it in the end zone or whatever, but don't take a sack and don't turn it over. Half their field goal kicker is 9 of 10 coming into the day. Veal, play action, rolling out. No, he gets straight ahead. Oh. Beautiful play to Eldridge for the, check that, Mario Hampton for the touchdown. What a fake. Ten-yard touchdown jump. Go back to the fourth down and say it was a good call. It was a good call. Mario Hampton, a sophomore, and now Faf on the point after. Needs to hold. And Arizona with a stunner here early. 21 to nothing. The Wildcats lead it. Still 9.28 left in this first half, and Dick Tomey's troops. Boy, are they playing well. UCLA holds the NCAA record of scoring in 210 consecutive games. The last time the Bruins were shut out was September 24, 1971. Arizona has scored in 196 straight games, the second longest streak in NCAA history. Obviously, Arizona will keep their scoring streak alive, but UCLA still not on the scoreboard. Mario Hampton with the touchdown run. Draw play, good call, because down inside that kind of territory, you know, uh, Gary, you know what's going to ha be happening. The defense is going to get the weight forward. They're coming after the quarterback on third and ten, and especially down there in that area. Nice kicking off. And back deep is Brian Brown. They'll bring it out to 20. Let's go back to this very good job of handling the ball by Veal that set up the touchdown. And I question that this play was in their wishbone offense in the past. It's a draw. The fullback sets to the right. He takes it. Good stunt pickup inside there by the offensive lineman. He hit that hole, Gary. I could see you running through that hole. Boy, I tell you what, huh? Veal really carried the fake quickness? out. With your quickness? Oh, you could get it. I don't know about that. You are giving me an awful lot of credit. <laughs> Where credit is certainly not due. Look at it. Hampton. has got to be excited. That's his second touchdown on the year. Sophomore, he lost 23 pounds from last year. Really helped his quickness. UCLA in a big catch-up situation. Red Johnson deflected, ooh, intended for the tight end Randy Austin. You wonder for Brett Johnson. This is his first road game in Pac-10 play. Hasn't had some success early, and he's still, you know, he's a freshman redshirt, and there, he's bound to have some bad days. Now, last week they beat Arizona State. He didn't have a great game. Coach Tony, you said, you know, last week was the first time he showed a little jittery feet in there, sort of felt the rush and was looking at the rush. But he probably won't do that today. But that's all part of growing up at that position. He's had to grow up in a hurry. They have not been able to bring him along slowly. From the 20 now, second and 10. Johnson wanted to throw again and not well thrown. Reggie Moore was covered, though. Covered very well by Daryl Lewis. And a flag on the field around where Johnson was tackled. He's shaken up a little bit. Johnson kind of checking his chin strap. I think the call roughing the passer, personal foul. Roughing the passer, defense, 15 yards, first down. Taking a look at it now, passer to the left side of your screen, dropping straight back. You can see Singleton, number 87, working inside. He steps up in, nice hole, nothing wrong right here. Just a little bit late in getting there, Reggie Johnson, number 47. Reggie Johnson is the second fastest player on this Arizona team. Do you believe that? Ran a 4-5-5, or 4-5-2 in the... Uh, Pro timing day in the spring. So the 15 yard penalty gives the Bruins a ball at the 35. That's intended for Corwin Anthony. 
Ron Beal saying, hey, give me some more of that new offense. Is he, is he listening to music or is he talking to the coaches? <laughs> he likes the hum of that, the engine he's driving right now. I, tell you I guess so. Now, Brett Johnson in this game is two of seven for 25 yards and really some bad misses, Dick. Not very close on some of them. Well, the one reason being the defensive line is getting close enough to him to make him to throw the ball high. They'll get him out on the perimeter and roll him out some. You watch. Mike Farr, number nine, goes in motion. Second and ten from the 35. Here's the draw. There Boy, it comes. And on his course is Brian Brown. And he's to the 45, and that should be enough for the first down. Brian Brown is a slashing type running back. He doesn't make you miss. But if there's a crease there, and as you'll see from the end zone, watch the fullback. Watch, and then the defensive lineman. See the hole open in there? Look how big that hole is. Doesn't take talent to get through it. It takes quickness to get through it. And that's what he has. Great quickness. Junior out of Carson, California. First down across the 45. Now that penalty may have really opened up some things for UCLA. They trail 21 to nothing. And Brown again, and this time not as successful. Arnold Arnold Mobley, Mobley was there. Anthony Smith was there. There's Mobley. Tall, skinny guy. The coaches are saying he only weighs 203 pounds at six foot four. He's a football player there. I watched him move on the practice field the other day. Honor student in high school coming out. Coming out of Dallas, Lincoln High School. Second down, seven now for the Bruins. 8.20 left in the first half. Play action fake by Johnson nice throw. on target that time. The throw to Paul Richardson. Richardson is starting to become a big factor in the UCLA offense. Makes the first down catch at the 42. They're going with out of huddle. They're ready to go. A hurry up offense as soon as they get the chains moved. You know, Arizona was concerned all week about UCLA's quick tempo offense. And they actually practiced one day Wednesday without having a defensive huddle at any time on the practice field. Johnson throwing and it's dropped. That was Richardson, Richardson. who just a moment ago had caught the 10 yard play this time not able to hang on. He is their fastest wide receiver. They say he's a gamer not known for his work ethic on the practice field but is improving but it is a real talent. So they go without a huddle again. Second down 10 802 left in the second quarter of play. Johnson to throw. Up the field and broken up. Coming from behind and getting there prematurely on the play was Arizona. That is Holt who came flying up, Richard Holt, and he's going to be called for interference. Here's the isolation on the receiver. He definitely made contact a little early, it looks like, or maybe that right hand got there, but I, I think you have to make that of the call. Richard Holt, a sophomore out of Carson, over the back and now penalties really helping UCLA this the whole drive the drive has been kept going coach told me he took his hat off tell you Holt give it to him Dick give it to him yeah get after him go ahead Holt was running for 10 yards I mean he was full steam to get to the point of impact I don't know why Brett Johnson didn't run that one I mean he had the whole corner to run it and he is a fine quick runner inexperienced maybe First down, the crowd not happy with that call, the pass interference. Johnson spread out, little trouble, and he just got rid of it. And Singleton was over there. Also over there was Salem. You can see here on the sprint out here, getting him outside the pocket, getting him outside the rush. The thing is, they just kept him going toward the sideline side so long he had no place left to throw the football. See, good defense. He had no place to set up and throw. You really get pinned in on the near sideline. Plus, you constrict the area you have to attack throwing it. So it comes now to a second and 10 from the 30. Make it the 31. Far and more can split to the near side. No back attack. Yep, that's Brown in motion. Johnson, and the catch is made by Far. Far had fallen down, had gotten up, and still got there to make the catch. He's about a yard short of the first down. Mike Farr, who had 66 catches last year, a school record for UCLA. And with that 66 catches, he did not catch a touchdown pass. Now, I have never heard of that with a man catching that many balls. It's a big issue with the UCLA team. He doesn't have one this year yet. And one in his entire career. Third and a yard to go.
They got it. Brown's got it. Brian Brown inside the 20 to the 19. You know, UCLA inside the 20 has been very effective when they get down there. From the 19, the Bruins You'll keep see this that drive they, going. They've been down there 18 times, scored 14, 11 touchdowns, three field goals. That's very efficient offense inside the 20. And you know, they have been playing you know, just weak teams when you consider it's Michigan and uh, those kind of Tennessee. Bar goes in motion. Eswick, the fullback, and Eswick to the 16-yard line, a pickup of four. It'll bring up second down. Zeno Alexander out of Houston Yates High School to make the tackle. Monday night on ABC, going to have the undefeated Los Angeles Rams, and what an arsenal they have. All kinds of weapons led by this guy, Jim Everett, and they're going to face the Buffalo Bills as their 20th anniversary season continues live. Boy, the Rams are really playing outstanding football. Well, they're getting the great production out of the quarterback. Second down. Johnson to throw. In trouble, and Singleton got it. Chris Singleton, he went up to throw, and Singleton just dragged him back down. Loss, it'll be third and nine. Here's Singleton coming from the outside. He's a good pass rusher. Comes up out there, he is, bang, he gets up there, gets the hands up high as the quarterback tries to go up high to throw it. He just gets his hands right up there and stuffs it back down. See number 84, that is his brother, Kevin's number. All of them are wearing it. Chris, the all Big Ten performer a year ago, should say Pac-10 performer. Third down and nine. They're coming again. He gets rid of it to Arbuckle, but he's not going to get much on that one. Good play that time by Chris Wright, number 31. Fourth down. They had one pass protector blocking two pass rushers. <laughs> you lose that battle. As we take a look at this from the end zone, focus your attention to the right side of the screen. Now, you see Geddes, number 92, breaks in there clean, right up there. That's hard to throw an accurate pass. He got it there, but not enough for the first down. Alfredo Velasco will attempt the field goal. He's 6 of 7, and this is going to be a 36-yard attempt. The snap is down. Maggio holds. The kick is up, and it's no good. Wide left. And so after all of that, having the penalties, keeping the drive going, they don't come away with any points. He was unstoppable inside the 30, 18 of 18 prior to that. And there is that slogan, bear down. It's also in the Arizona locker room, and they have been bearing down. They lead 21 to nothing. Missed opportunity by UCLA. That's a mental letdown for the squad as well, because, you know, he, is, he was 30 for 30 inside the 40-yard line. That's outstanding. It's got to be a little bit of a letdown. Beal on the option to Eldridge. Eldridge is getting close and has the first down to the 31. Well, while they move the sticks, let's go down to Cheryl Miller. She has a very special guest. Thank you, Gary. With me is Margaret Singleton. She is the mother of Kevin and Chris Singleton, who play for U of A. And Kevin, four months ago, was diagnosed of having leukemia. He's in remission now. But what type of burden, and how are you really, you know, holding up to this? I'm doing okay. It's really very tough because it's... I feel really sad today because Kevin can't be here, and I want to say hi, and I want to tell him to not to give up because Chris and I love him, and we need him, and we know that he can beat this, so just keep fighting. Now, you were living in New Jersey, and you moved out here. Was this one of the reasons? No, I came out here a year ago just to watch them play ball their last two years, their junior and senior year, and as it turned out, it was, it was, I'm really glad that I was here because of his illness, but I came out just to watch them play. Well, you can't, you can't beat the weather, and we're really happy that things are going well for Kevin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheryl. Kevin, by the way, wanted to be here today, but he's been having a little trouble with a cold and some flu, and so they just wanted him to rest and watch at home, and Kevin, we say hello as well. First down, I should say first and five after that last penalty, setting it up at the 36. McGill comes in motion. Eldridge. And Eldridge to the 40, very close to another first down. They are dominating the line of scrimmage. Right now, that defensive line has got to get some penetration, take some people on, and whip them. 
They might start doing some stunning in that defensive line here. Greg Davis on the stop, but it's a first down. Getting back to that Velasco miss, they depend so much on him. Boy, that has to shake your confidence a little bit. It has to when you know the guy's never missed for you, and all of a sudden he misses. And then you start saying, oh, is this our bad day or what? So far, it's been a bad day for UCLA. They trail 21 to nothing. First down at the 41. Beal will pitch it back. Eldridge with the ball. Uh, Eldridge made the wrong decision there. Good defense. Carlton Gray was up there, number three. He's a true freshman out of Cincinnati. Last year, Gary, I had the opportunity to broadcast, uh, broadcast this ball game, and Arizona didn't make an inch running the option in the play. And now mixing in this other offense, now here they come with the option again. It looks like he's going to have a chance to hit that crease, but instead of taking up in the crease, he decided to come outside, and he ran right into his own blocker, number nine, Kip Lewis. Saw Patton closing in on him. Gain of five. Eldridge now 168 yards. That's a career high. It breaks his old standard of 166 yards last year against Eastern Michigan. Sap with the ball. He is real quick. Yes, he is. Not big, but quick. Gets to the midfield strike. And it, on quickness alone, not design, not coaching, he moved that ball into a third and short situation. Chances of making the first down much better. He should have been tackled five, six yards back there. They weren't quick enough. You mean you can't coach athletic ability? Not really. And, and Terry has been concerned all year. Coach Donahue has been concerned that their defense isn't quick enough. Sapp, again, is very, very small. He's 5'8", 164, but is he quick? Third down in the yard. Arizona with a 21 to nothing lead. Sap again. Good this job, time, Mike Lodish. Yep, Mike Lodish, number 94. Brother <laughs> Rice High School in Birmingham, Michigan. You know what he told me last night? He says, Coach Glenn Parker, the offensive tackle for Arizona, is a friend of mine. But he says, tomorrow I'm going to get after him. <laughs> <laughs> he will. <laughs> so it's fourth down, and Nice will come in and punt the football. Farr will go back for the Bruins. Two and a half minutes left in this first half. Got it. You gotta be alert when you return punts against this team. Hits it very high. Barr calling for the fair catch at the 11 yard line. UCLA has it there. 40 yard punt. This has got to surprise some people to score thus far if you're looking around the country. 21 0 Arizona. Arizona leading, and UCLA has made a change, a change at quarterback. There he is, number seven, Jim Bonds, a sophomore. He, along with Brett Johnson, were neck and neck in spring training for the starting job. They have a lot of confidence as he comes in at this stage in Jim Bonds. He has a much stronger rifle-type arm. Not the scrambler type, but a good, strong arm. Brett Johnson leads with 5 of 12 for 45 yards on his first snap. He throws it in. That almost was six. Darrell Lewis just missed a touchdown. Wow. Darrell Lewis intercepted the ball last year against UCLA. He must have been in a rolled up coverage. Here's the ISO on the receiver right there, Reggie Moore. He's going to catch the ball. No, he's not going to catch the ball. He went for the ball to his highest point, did everything right but catch it. That ball was thrown so hard that Lewis just couldn't, couldn't quite hang point. on. Good point, Gary. He does throw a heavy, hard ball. Boy, he has an arm. It's interesting first call for a guy to make a throw like that. They have confidence in him. Second and ten. Trying to play catch up. And this one is picked up by Singleton. So Bonds, a near miss, and then the interception. And nothing is going right for Terry Donahue's team. It was a crossing pattern, straight drop back. You can see in the middle of the screen, he's sitting back there in the pocket. You'll see the receiver moving off your screen to your right. Defender right there did a real nice job. Singleton uh, just covering a man-to-man -man once he got over in his zone. Oh, my gosh, what a turnover. Well, his mother's got to be proud of him uh, right now. So as well sure as Kevin, who's watching it from a hospital bed. And, boy, that's exciting for that family. Oh, Tommy's in the full wishbone. Yep. First and goal now from the eight-yard line. Beal keeps the football, cuts it up. Touchdown, Arizona. 
So Ron Veal doing a great job of faking it up the middle, and he takes it in from seven yards out. Super play. 27 to nothing. Half, who's been very busy, adds the point after. 28 to nothing with 1.53 left in this first half. Singleton set it up with the interception, and the Wildcats are on a roll. Arizona with Singleton picking off the pass. Veal scoring from seven yards out, and don't adjust your set. It is 28 to nothing. 28 to nothing, and we still have 153 left in the first half. Nice will kick off for the Wildcats, and this one will be a returnable. It's going to be Brian Brown. Falls low at the 17. Here's what's, here's what's set up the last scoring play, the interception by Singleton. Good drop back pass. Not a lot of pressure on him. A lot of time, almost too much time. Flows across there. Nice job by Singleton right here. His first interception in his career. He's made over 245 tackles. That's the first time he's intercepted one. Here's what it leads to. The option, fake the fullback inside, come off. Fake the pitch out there. See him flip that there? Everybody took the bait. Hey, he looks cool today, doesn't he? Boy, does he ever. Now, what do you do if you're UCLA? Bonds has already suffered an interception. You just keep throwing, I guess. Try to get back in this one. Don't have much choice. From the 16-yard line, first down. Bonds, this time on a delayed handoff. It's Kevin Williams, their fastest running back, and he's out to the 30. First down, but a penalty flag. This Kevin Williams is something special. Yes, he is out of Spring, Texas. Senior year in high school, he is considered to be the best high school running back in the country. Holding will bring it back. You know, uh, UCLA is sort of getting it handed to him right here in this first half, but they, uh, at any time, have they shown a real spark? Uh, like, uh, you know, do they maybe not quite mentally ready to get after it today? Huh? Oh, I don't know. Think the heat's a factor? I don't know. It's going to get hotter and hotter if you trail by this. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential in, College in, scoreboard. In force from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. We'll be joining Roger Twible with scores, highlights, a preview of tonight's game one of the 89 World Series, an update on the Trans-Antarctic Expedition. I'll tell you right now, it's a little colder there than it is here. Hot today, and it's getting hotter if you're a Bruin player or fan. Arizona with a 28 to nothing lead. See, the thing is now, Arizona's playing a nickel defense with five defensive backs. A little tougher to throw for Bonds against that type of cover. Draw again. And this time, it's Williams stopped at the 15-yard line. They're still about 11 yards short of the first down. Darren Case is over there. He's out of Tempe, McClintock High School. Also, Ty Parton. Parton, they moved to the defense after playing offense in the Oregon game. Timeout now, Arizona. They have one left. So Jim Bonds will come to the near side. Out of Valencia High School, Valencia, rather, Hart High School in Valencia. Well, they told us he could start on a lot of football teams, and they felt they were in very good hands when they would put him in a game. Well, they didn't want to put him in under these circumstances. <laughs> that wasn't what they had in mind. Well, the fall classic. Boy, it's always something special when the World Series comes around, and game one tonight, right here on ABC, the Giants going against the Oakland A's. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern. And speaking of World Series, who is this guy? <laughs> That's Coach Dick Tomey from the University of Arizona. He plays in a semi-pro baseball league here in Tucson in the summer. He pitches and catches, believe it or not. One time, he caught a doubleheader catching the second game. His son was the pitcher in the game. Son Rich, yeah. yes. He never quits this guy. You know what's funny about that picture? <laughs> he faked it. He's not a lefty. I know batter. he's right-handed. He's right-handed. Right. So that wanted... makes that a big collector's item. <laughs> I'll tell you, he is a competitor. The other guy on the other sideline is going to just be Yes, he too. is. Nothing wrong with their hearts. 
second down and 11 now. Bonds will give off to Kevin Williams again. Look at this guy. Out to the 30. Oh, is he smooth? Brings the ball out to the 35. Richard Holt caught up with it. He's not only smooth, Gary, he has 10 400 meter time. And that is flying. I mean, that's just flying. Won the Pac 10 was uh, 100 meter dash this last year. His Iceland play, handed off deep. He bounces to the outside. Now look at that speed. He gets up there. He's right up in the secondary right now. Wow. 20 yard gain to the 35. First down for the Bruins. 55 seconds left in the first half. Bonds play action fake. Boy, look at this throw. Up the field. Intercepted. And picked off. Hammerschmidt. Jip Hammerschmidt. The ball was thrown so hard, no one could hang on, and Hammerschmidt took the deflection. You see, it's a play action pass deep in the I formation. He's faking the pass to freeze the linebackers to work people in behind the linebackers. He gets them by him, but he throws the ball high. It's over the top. It's batted then on into the deep safety right there. Hammerschmidt making the secondary. That's the second interception of his career. He's <laughs> taking another look at it. You'll see that the action does freeze the linebackers. See, easy to get in behind him now. They're looking. Here comes the throw. It's pushed up in the air, deflected. Interception, Hammerschmidt. Paul Richardson was the intended target, and Hammerschmidt, who at one time was a quarterback for Arizona, with the interception. Bonds is 0 for 3 and two interceptions. Here is Veal. And he just got rid of that one. Hammerschmidt, they call him the hammer. He'll really unload on you. When he was an emergency quarterback for Arizona, he went 71 yards on a keeper against California. <laughs> He has that look about him when you interviewed yeah, him yesterday. <laughs> he looks like a defensive player. He's got that defensive yeah. look. He got uh, the Bronco Nagurski Award one year for playing both ways. Played offense and defense. They give a helmet without a face mask. That's the trophy when they give that. Second and ten. Veal with a lot of time. And Kip Lewis is down there. That'll bring up third and ten. That was Mac Darby commending or on the far side defending on the play. Darby didn't know if he would play today. He's had a pinched nerve in his neck. Missed last week's game. Boy, and is he a good football player? Last year in this ball game against Arizona and the Wishbone, he was a dominating player in the game. Had ten tackles. Third and ten. Thirty-three seconds. Well, if you're Terry Donahue, Dick, what are you going to do at halftime? <laughs> Start chewing. Now, not bubble gum, I'll tell you that. Wow. Chewing on rear ends, you're doing. I get The tempo hasn't been what you need. Veal again to throw. He's got all kinds of time and connects. That's Kyle Jan rolling up with a catch. He'll a go yard for it. short of the first down. He'll go for it. Clock running, 20 seconds. They have one timeout left, yeah, Arizona it. does. And now they go. they're going to use it. So Arizona now has used all three of their timeouts. 14 seconds left, and everything that Dick Tomey has been calling has been working today. <laughs> Field temperature right now, 103 degrees. Well, next Saturday, Michigan against Iowa. We did that game last year, Dick, and they ended in a 17 tie. Tie. And then UCLA, uh, Oregon State. We'll be up there. And UCLA, Oregon State. I will not be joining you there. I'm Cora going over Dallas. to Rome. They give me a break, huh? Yeah, I'm going to get away from you for a week. <laughs> I put up with you so many weeks of the year. Going over to Rome to do the McDonald's Basketball Open. The Denver Nuggets, Alex English. And uh, we'll be bringing that game your way. They play basketball in Rome? Well, what do they, they do? What? Big meatballs? I'll tell you what, Danny Ferry decided they yeah. did. Yeah, for a lot of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe well, well, lasagna, yeah, anyway. Yeah, a million meatballs, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, Nice is going to punt on fourth down. This has been a long first half for UCLA, and now Mike Farr will go back. Now UCLA wants a timeout. Hmm. Maybe they don't think they're going to punt. <laughs> he, uh, Dick, always creates an air of concern in your decision making. Believe me. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> He's casual, huh? These kids in Arizona, look at that, pink glasses. Ruben Morales, there are a few 
light years or miles away from the beach. But uh, he doesn't even have shoulder pads <laughs> on. Look at him. He's big as a house. <laughs> Like to pause now five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. KGO TV, Channel 7, serving the Bay Area. So it looks as though Nice will punt. So with Dick Tomey, you never know. 14 well, you, seconds left. You notice UCLA is in a regular defense. They're not in a punt return defense. They call this safe return. And nice gets it away. Hit oh. a beautiful punt. Woo! That one is going to land in Phoenix, all the way into the end zone seats. Why don't punters get punched like that when they kick out of their own end zone, rather than kicking it all the way over into somebody else's end well, zone? Well, he just missed clubbed on that one. <laughs> missed clubbed. At the 20, that will go as a 51-yard punt. So with five seconds left, UCLA will come in and end what has been a torrid, terribly disappointing first half for this guy. I don't know if Terry's ever been confronted with this kind of thing. Ooh. 28 to nothing. Last time they lost here was 27-24 in a game down to the very end where John Lee missed a field goal. Yeah. That was the last time Arizona had beaten UCLA. The Bonds will give off to Williams, and Williams is getting some yardage on this one. He's something to think about in the second half. So he brings it out to the 43, and that will bring it to a close. 28-0 in favor of Arizona. We'll return with more college football action between UCLA and the University of Arizona after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Being brought to you by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Now here's your host, Roger Twibell. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our studios in New York. Top-ranked Notre Dame playing tonight at the Air Force Academy. Interesting note on this game, Air Force with the most rushing touchdowns, 31, of course, led by D. Dallas. Notre Dame has not allowed a rushing touchdown this year. At the Orange Bowl in Miami, Gino Toretto leading the Hurricanes against San Jose State. Toretto, of course, the redshirt freshman from Pinole, California, just north of San Jose. Uh, one touchdown pass here to Lamar Thomas, that in the first quarter. In the Big A, Colorado and Iowa State in Ames. The Buffs win at 52-17, but Eric Bieniemy, their outstanding running back, a fractured right tibia, he is lost indefinitely. Nebraska just keeps on rolling along 43-7 now. They lead Missouri in the third quarter. Michigan and Michigan State. Michigan leads that game 10 to nothing at halftime. These two teams the last three years have gone to the Rose Bowl. Sixth ranked Tennessee is idle this week. They play Alabama at Birmingham next Saturday. An off week halfway through the season that should be welcome, but for the volunteers it didn't turn out that way. Uh, they'll be without their leading rusher, Reggie Cobb, who is kicked off the team by head coach Johnny Majors. Cobb, a junior, was also suspended last February from the team and reinstated in July. Both violations were reportedly drug-related. Majors had this comment. This is a team game, and everybody has to go by the same rules and regulations, and he knew what those were. Texas A&M has won 17 consecutive Southwest Conference games at home. They're holding high-scoring Houston to just a touchdown, 14-7 in the third quarter. Pitt has beat Navy 31-14, the last game in the series between those two teams. Alabama has struggled today against Southwest Louisiana, though they lead it now in the fourth quarter, 24-10. LSU and Auburn, the Tigers have won six of the last seven. Auburn has just scored to go ahead in the fourth quarter, 10-6. The upset of the day occurred at Death Valley. Georgia Tech beats Clemson 30-14. Clemson had not lost a home coming game since 1970. In Dallas, this used to be the game of the year. Now it's just another one, but Texas, who hasn't won in, since 83, leads at 21 to 7 at halftime. In the Big Ten, Illinois and Purdue, a baseball score here. Illinois leads at 7 to 2 in the fourth quarter. Florida State over Virginia Tech, that upset by Tech last week over West Virginia, short-lived 41 to 7 the final. Peter Tom Willis with a big day indeed. Three touchdown passes, 338 yards, and one of the TD passes to Amp Lee. This one will go 67 yards. Florida Florida State now 4-2 and two on the season. And also in college football, Ohio State and Indiana, 35-31 the final here. Interesting way this game ended, folks. Fourth quarter, score 35-29 Ohio State. Less than two minutes to go. Greg Fry of the Buckeyes races to the end zone for a safety, making it 35-31. Now following the kickoff, a free kick, Indiana, for some unexplained reason, doesn't cover the football. Ohio State's Vinnie Clark will fall on it 
and Ohio State gets a big win for John Cooper right there. Also in the Big Ten, Minnesota has escaped. Even though Anthony Thompson didn't play, they beat Northwestern 2018. Iowa and Wisconsin, look at this one. Badger fans, 24 apiece, that one in the fourth quarter. Penn State and Syracuse, this game, Penn State leading by a point. The Nittany Lions have not allowed any points in the second half this year. Florida and Vanderbilt, final score here, 34 to 11, as interim coach Gary Darnell gets his first victory. Now, Darnell replaced head coach Galen Hall, who resigned on Sunday. Hall resigned because of alleged improper payments to two former officials there. This is the second big penalty, or could be in 10 years, and I asked Bill Arnsbarger, the AD, about the death penalty at Florida. I really don't know, and I would not want to speculate on that. Uh, our feeling, and Dr. Bryan expressed at the press conference Sunday, that the university, the institution, will do what we have to do, and the NCAA will do what they have to do. And I would not want to speculate on, on, on any of the things that you're talking about because uh, I just do not have the information available to me to do that. John Darnell, a 13-yard touchdown pass to Reed Hines in the final minute, and Ole Miss beats Georgia as they break a 12-game losing streak to the Bulldogs that game at Oxford, 17-13 in the final. We're going to preview the World Series. Talk to Al Michaels, uh, the Bay Bridge Series. Ricky Henderson of the A's, Will Clark of the Giants. But first, some more scores. Hi, everybody. Roger Twible back. Let's get you caught up on some other scores. And uh, Texas A&M make it Miami and San Jose State now. And that game is 17-8. San Jose State has just scored Toretto with the touchdown pass in that contest. Houston and Texas A&M. Andre Ware has been intercepted three times and sacked four times. Meanwhile, Texas and Oklahoma. The Sooners have scored. It's 21-14 that game in the third quarter. And Oregon and Washington. They're all tied up at 14 in the second quarter. I'll be back throughout the afternoon with more scores and highlights. But let's send you back to the second half of the game. From New York, the Prudential Halftime Report has been brought to you by the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Shocking score at halftime. Arizona leading UCLA 28 to nothing. This, of course, is a game that's in the run for the Roses. Everyone in the Pac-10 Conference wanting to, of course, end up New Year's Day in Pasadena to play the granddaddy of all of them, the Rose Bowl. Brand new press box here at Arizona Stadium and a crowd of better than 50,000. It's warm, it's been a record summer and as far as that goes fall temperature wise. And Arizona's made it a lot hotter for UCLA as they have marched to a 28 to nothing halftime lead. Dick Vermeil, my question is, do you come back with Brett Johnson now or do you continue with Jim Bonds? Well, I think Terry Donahue. Well, Brett Johnson's been the quarterback, uh, you know, and given the position as a starting, I would come back with him. I'd come back and say, hey, we didn't do anything in the first half, offensively or defensively. Let's go out and start a whole new ball game and do it with the people that you thought were the best players before they got here. Nice will kick off for the Wildcats. Brown goes back along with Kevin Williams. If there was one bright spot for UCLA, it was Kevin Williams running the ball late in the first half. Yeah, and it was almost against a prevent-type defense, but there's no question he has some talent. Nice kicks off, and Brian Brown is going into the end zone and drops it. He'll down it there, and at the 20-yard line, UCLA will set it up. So let's see who's coming in at quarterback. Dick, something you wanted to point out to the fans is this graphic. Well, you know, you, you tend to think on a hot day the players are out there playing 15-minute quarters, 30-minute a half, but actual playing time from the snap to the whistle, UCLA has played 2 minutes and 59 seconds, Arizona 3 minutes and 47 seconds. Hmm. You're not, you know, you're throwing a series of 5-second wars. That's what it amounts to. And I mean wars. You ought to emphasize the word wars. It's Brett Johnson back. Yep, it is Brett Johnson, the quarterback from the 20-yard line, and he's got a play-action rollout. In trouble, being chased by Anthony Smith. 
And ad libs his way for a very fine six yard gain. A great defense by Arizona. They want to throw back to Charles Ar Arbuckle, the tight end on a crossing pattern. They couldn't do it. He wanted to throw back. He couldn't do it. The guy was covered like a blanket. You'll see Arbuckle the top right. He'll be coming across. Here he is on the rollout. Defense have everybody covered. No one to throw to. Therefore, here comes the rush. And the rush is a good, quick rush. Shows you, though, the ability of Johnson. He really can move around. Gain a six. Giving off. Oh, hello. That is Kevin Williams, the freshman. And this time, nothing. Anthony, Anthony Smith. He's, he is the leader of the defense, Anthony uh, Smith is, number 94. He's a big guy, 6'5", 248, an NFL prospect. Uh, pro scouts in there, uh, Gary, when we were looking at tapes and game tapes, uh, looking at him, evaluating him as a player. His parents died in an accident at the age of three, so he has been a guy from Elizabeth City, North Carolina, that's really fought his way uphill. Third down now, and still four yards to go. A lot of time, and still can't find anybody. The no coverage is that good. Johnson trying to hit Charles Arbuckle, and Chris Singleton was absolutely on top of it. It's almost as if Arizona's defense is in UCLA's offensive huddle. They're covering those patterns like a blanket. It was a flooded pattern, getting three people over to the short side of the field, and there was just no place for the kid to throw the ball. Maggio will go back and punt to Darrell Lewis. Well, if you're a UCLA fan and you're looking for some bright spot, Arizona led UCLA back in 86 when they played in the Rose Bowl, 18 to nothing. Only to see the Bruins come back. But this is 28 to nothing. Big rush. They almost got it. Oh, they're going to get out. No, no penalty. Off it comes to Lewis, and he's to the 41. They had three blue shirts on top of Maggio. Maggio pleading for the call. He's not going to get it. 38-yard punt, five-yard return. The Wildcats, 28 to nothing, and they have the football. Terry Donahue, 45, but aging fast. Dick <laughs> Tomey, 51, on the right of the screen. Getting younger. Yes, he is. Donahue in his 14th year, but this is maybe one of the longer afternoons he's experienced at UCLA. Give to Mario Hampton the fullback, and Hampton about four yards to the 45-yard line. That is Rasheen Keaton, the linebacker credited with the tackle. I like how he plays football. Watching the tapes against Arizona State, he's a real solid, good football player. He was injured in 1986. He had a red shirt. Boy, he's come back healthy. They lost three outstanding linebackers from last year's team that went 10 and 2. Second down, a long five. On the option, Veal. Going to keep it very close to the first down. Mike Lodish is over there, along with Keaton again. I think somewhere here, the defensive coaches have got to say, hey, let's not play our basic scheme 80% of the time. Let's play the basic scheme 50% of the time and start coming some dogs and blitzes and get after these people. Create the minus yardage play. Well, they're going to measure, see if they got the first down. This gives us an opportunity to get a perspective on this game. We talked to Dick Tomey and asked him to kind of put a label on this game for us. Well, I think, you know, the, the, uh, the bullies of the Pac-10 have been uh, SC and UCLA for time in memoriam, you know, and I think Arizona's, uh, uh, the record says we're the third team in the Pac-10 in the last five years. We were third in the league last year, tied with Washington State. We beat Washington State. Um, we have an opportunity again this year to be up in the conference standings if we can win some of these key ball games. And so if we're going to go to the next level, we have to beat the Los Angeles schools. And uh, this is our first opportunity, and so we'd love to do it. And they've made a very bold step to go to the next level. It was a first down on the measurement, and the handoff to McGill gets another five, and Marcus Patton made the stop. I think the other thing, too, coming into this football game, the University of Arizona was really excited about playing UCLA. I don't sense in watching UCLA play that they're really excited about playing Arizona, especially right now, 20 down, you know, 28 Well, you know, Dick, I tell you, Jerry had talked about it. he wasn't sure what kind of football team he's had. He was kind of wavering a little bit before that Michigan game. He's concerned about the personality of the squad, you know? Second down now, five yards to go. Hampton, the fullback. And he's still on his feet. And finally, they blow the whistle. Argo was over there to make the stop. Hampton's strange play. Hampton's a big kid, 220 pounds. 
There's Argo. He had a 48-yard interception last week against Arizona State for a touchdown. 3.5 grade point average in high school. Really, up. it's nice to coach those kids with a break. They well, you were, what, you were what, 3.9, something like that? On a seven-point scale. <laughs> <laughs> My most important class to me was Techniques of Teaching Football by Bob Brunson <laughs> at San Jose State. Well, you made a nice living. <laughs> Third down now, less than a yard. Going to the Bones. And the Bones going to get him the first down as Hampton straight ahead. Brian Kelly made the stop along with Brad Bryson. Well, not only is Arizona winning this football game, Dick, but they are building something. Now, you got to think about this new offense. They went to Colorado. Bill McCartney spent some time with him. This, that was just this past week, or yep. a week before last week, in their bye week, just to study how Colorado had broken the bone offense and used the eye and utilized it and everything else, and it's definitely made a contribution here. The other thing is, some of the guys I've seen walking around here, redshirt, I saw a 330-pound tackle big enough to eat hay. How'd you like to have his grocery bill? Oh, my God. First down now from the 39 of UCLA. 10.47 left in the third quarter. Leo pulls it down. He's taken off. And a flag on the play as he is tackled at the 33. Marcus Patton over there. Veal likes to run, and hey, when you're leading 28 to nothing, you don't need to take any chances. There's a hanky on the field down there. Hanky at the 41. <laughs> Holding against Arizona. Again, Arizona had only 18 total penalties coming into this game for the whole year. Here he is. It's a straight drop back pass. He's sitting out there. He fades a little bit to the right. He has time. He has time. Now he's flushed. Lodi's flushed him to the outside. Now, see, he really doesn't want to throw the bubble. He wants to run the football. The young man standing to the right, that's Dick Tomey's son, who's also an outstanding baseball player, pitching here to junior college. Yeah, Pima College. Pima College. He, Rich is his name, and... Uh, Boy, has he grown up since the last time oh, I saw him. I saw oh, him when old. Yeah, oh. I know it. Over in Hawaii is the last I had uh, seen his son. First down now, and a long ways to go. Hand off this time to Hampton, and Hampton, oh, he's tough to get down to the 45-yard line. Still about 17 yards short of the first down. Argo was the one that dragged him down. You, you can see his strength. He bench presses 400 pounds, runs the 40 and 4-5. High school honor roll student. You know what his hobby is? Cooking. <laughs> well, you're that big. you got to be able to cook, right? <laughs> you got to do something like it. Nick, you put this game in perspective. Arizona won back-to-back -back Oklahoma, Washington, but boy, this has got to go up there as one of the big wins for well, Dick Tomey. And they were terribly disappointed in their performance against Oregon. Not taking anything away from Oregon, but they felt they were the better team. Stridening is in there at a fullback spot. Back to throw as Veal pulls it down, takes off. And now throwing down the far side, just got rid of it. Ogun Fedidemi was the intended receiver. Nice job, Ogun Fedidemi. You mean on the uh, name or on, the play? On the name, on the name. <laughs> He was a transfer from Michigan, played for Bo Schimbeckler. He walked on there. Yep. Walked on here. He's out of Washington, D.C. His father is somewhere in Nigeria. His mother works in the Washington, D.C. area. Honor student. Won the Golden Eagle Academic Award here last year in 1988 for the outstanding student on the team. Third down now, long ways to go. Third and 16. Gary, you know, he came here without a scholarship and earned one at the end of the 88 season. Double O is split out along with Lewis. This is the fullback, Stridenig. Stridenig. Stridenig is a walk-on out of Austin, Texas. They tell me that he is absolutely as hard-nosed as any player they've got. He's been a great special teams player. Look, he looks hard-nosed. What's this beard thing? You know, a lot of these guys have beards. Well, you got to keep warm down here in Arizona. <laughs> it's supposed to make you look mean? He looks mean. Nice now to punt. 9-13, still 28 to nothing in favor of the Wildcats. That was the margin at halftime. Far will go back for UCLA. Snap to the side, but Nice is equal to it. Kicked it too far. Yes, he did. That's going to make it into the end zone. And at the 20-yard line, a 39-yard punt. UCLA will have it. Well, the Bruins need to have something going. The only chance they had was a field goal. They missed that. They're down by 28.
colorful crowd here in the great southwest. Arizona Stadium, crowd of better than 50,000 in Parents' Day here. And right now, UCLA trying to put the pieces together. They start from the 20-yard line. Johnson pitching back to Kevin Williams. Williams for five to the 25. Marcel Wade over there to make the stop. Now, here is a player of the future. They really like this guy. He's out of Oakland, 6'2", 229, very heavily recruited. High school honor roll, honor roll student. Got a number of these bright guys. He's a drummer, likes to play the drums. That's how he gets himself in the mood to hit people. Second down, five from the 25. Scott Miller and Reggie Moore split out. 827 left in the third. Williams again, and Williams fighting for that first down. I believe he's got it. Good second effort by Kevin Williams. See, he just cut that back on his own. He didn't like what he saw outside, so he just took it back up inside. Reggie Johnson will be credited with the stop. First down, UCLA. Williams has carried the ball now seven times for 64 yards. We mentioned he won the 100 meters in the Pac-10 track championships. <laughs> Little draw handoff to Williams for three more yards. Coach Donahue said that Williams in just recent weeks has started the show that he's gaining understanding and the confidence that he belongs playing in the, you know, the Pac-10, playing at UCLA, and being the player that he's going to mature to be. Just started to show it. Took him a while to get used to double days, too. <laughs> Two practices a day. Took him a while. That was Zeno Alexander going off the field who made the stop on that last play. Second down now. Eight yards to go. Moore and Miller again split out. Red Johnson on the play action. Far side. Is okay. it real to catch? No, it's no. not. Reggie Moore is out of bounds. Richard Holt, number 37, defending on the play. Boy, they slipped that one in on He threw the ball a little bit high anyway, but the defender was there. Here he goes. going to roll it out there. Corner rolls up in front. Safety coming over here. He goes up there. Yeah, that's a catchable ball. You got to catch that football. Oh, he gets a trainer. Got a man shaken up for Arizona. We'll try to figure that out as soon as possible. And it looks like Anthony Smith. That's who it is. So Smith is down, and we're going to go away for a moment. 7:29 now left in this third quarter. 28 to nothing, Arizona. Anthony Smith helped off the field just a moment ago. The defensive end. We'll take a look in a moment as to how he got hurt. Ty Parton has come in to replace him, the redshirt freshman out of Scottsdale. Third down, third and eight. Johnson near side. Moore's got it. He stays in bounds. No, he went out of bounds. He's out of bounds Good at job. the 41, but it's a first down catch. It was number four against number four. Reggie Miller against Darrell Lewis. 26 yard game. Threw the ball right where he had to throw the ball. Up high, gave the receiver the chance to go up for the ball. The defender can't see that ball in that situation many times, Gary. You'll see that he sets up nicely. Now he throws it up high into the outside. Now the receiver right down here at the bottom of your screen. Here's Reggie. See the ball way up there. He gets up there outside like that. Good job. Tough on the defender. Reggie Moore last year had 38 catches. He was a sophomore All-American. 26-yard gain. Here's Kevin Williams. Fumble the ball. The ball is got it. And Arizona's got it. So for a moment, it looked like UCLA was putting the pieces together, but the turnover looked like Chris Singleton coming up with a fumble recovery. Marcel Wade, the guy that hit the guy, Williams, to separate the ball. The deep handoff, so he has plenty of time to tuck it away and get out. He's carrying it in his left arm. He gets his pads down there. It gets high, hit right now. They stripped it out on the way down to the ground. Marcel Wade, number 44, stripped it loose. Williams, they said they thought he was ready to play. They were excited about him, and that fumble just going to have to grow a little bit with that. The redshirt freshman. First down now to 35. Hampton, the fullback. A couple of yards on the play. Brian Kelly there on the stop. So Singleton with an interception, Hammerschmidt with an interception, and now a fumble. Three turnovers against UCLA. That computes to be worth 12 points. Turnovers. Fumble is worth two and a half points. The Bud Good, Buddy, 
Bud Goody computer tells me, and the interception worth about four and a half points. Puts it in proper perspective. You lose when you do that. <laughs> Second down, eight yards to go. Eldridge hasn't carried for a while, and here he goes. To the 45, first down. Eric Turner made the stop. 18-yard game. Really a super job of blocking by the offensive right guard, right to the left of the goalpost, number 63. See, he gets a nice turnout block, opens up the hole there. Toffelmeyer does a nice job up in there. Good blocking at the point of attack. Eldridge now 186 yards rushing. Boy, he's found a new career in this offense. <laughs> If he goes into a chalk talk on Monday and they talk about the wishbone, he's going to walk out. What a performance. He's carried 18 times. Here he goes again. I like the way he just takes it into. He's yeah. aggressive with the ball. Well, he's a big kid, too, at 212 pounds. Argo, Turner on the stop. Pick up of nine yards on the play. Second and one. You know he's getting the picture of everything going on because he is a photography major. You know? <laughs> you planned that one all day long. <laughs> Tennis today, 51,562. And a happy Arizona crowd. I'm sure a surprised Arizona crowd. 28 to nothing, Arizona. Five and a half left in the third quarter. Leo scrambling around. He's got some running room. 30, 25, 20. Picks up gets a block. big block to the 15. Oh! at the 14. Nice hit. Eric Turner made the stop. Oh, did he get some help on that run? Yeah, but he got hit at the end of it. Eric Turner really put the pads to him. That's a 24-yard scramble by Ron Veal. A la Randall Cunningham, Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> Why throw it when you can run further? He just takes off. Real graceful young man. See, smooth. Gets around there. Look at him. He's picking up. Now, watch him pick up the block right there. That's Elridge down there getting the block. Ooh. And watch that hit. Wow. He nice blocked. hit, Turner. Patton. That was Patton who was knocked out of there. 24-yard gain. First down for 12 and a half. Pitch comes back to Elridge. Running room to the five. He's to the three. Boy, Rip Shear, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, Ron McBride, who is 50 years old today, the offensive line coach. Sam Papali, the running back coach, and Mark Lunsford, the receiver coach, all coaching this Arizona offense have got to be pleased. Please. What a birthday present for a 50-year-old offensive line coach from San Jose State. Wow. First and goal now at the two-yard line. Eldridge continues to mount numbers. Now 210 yards on the desk. Had 107 last year against UCLA. And is this a mishandled? No, they do that. I Quick watched count. him on the practice field. Quick count, nobody moves, just the center and the quarterback. Man. So the defensive linemen then don't respond. That's interesting. Veal to the one. If it's all legal, there's no flags. No one moved but Veal and Toffelmeyer. Huh. You better be ready for Dick Tomey's team. I watched him do this in the practice field, and I thought they were offside, just like you did. But watch, fans, nobody will move. Just those guys, see? They don't let the other linemen move on this until late. So the defensive people don't move, unless they're looking at the ball. Second and goal at the one. From the wishbone, and taking it straight over. Veal keeping, and he is in for the touchdown. Just a little sneak. Didn't have far to go. Most fundamental scoring play in the offense. Boy, they really carried the fake out. Did you see the yeah. back go up over the top as well? You yeah. know, Gary, one time as a junior college player, that's the very same play. I was a quarterback. I fumbled the snap. But we lost the game. <laughs> so help me got it. Never yeah. forgot it. Babs' kick was good, but there's a penalty flag. And it's uh, against UCLA. So the point will stand. They'll assess it on the kickoff. Defense, 12 men on the field. 
Extra point is good. Down well, Terry's now gone to 12 men trying to get this game turned around. <laughs> 5-0 record in the Rose Bowl. 1-0 as a player. 1-0 as an assistant coach. And 3-0 as a head coach. Well, Terry Donahue, not only in the Rose Bowl, has been effective, but seven consecutive bowl victories. That's an NCAA record, but right now he's just trying to survive. Down 35 to nothing. 351. There's the last drive. Deal. Another touchdown, this one from one yard out. So Nice will kick off. The thing to keep in mind, again, is the NCAA record of scoring 210 games without being in, shut out. That is UCLA. Today. That is in jeopardy. Look at that kick. That kick is going through the uprights. Into the band. Yep. Of course, there was a penalty. Yeah, that's right. The penalty assessed after the point after. Okay, this gives us time to bring you the Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week. It's brought to you by American Honda, who is proud to support amateur athletics. And this week's award goes to Rob Myers, a senior punter from Washington State. This season, Rob's average of 45.4 yards per punt is the second best in the nation. And Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Washington State University. He has a GPA of 3.1 from La Canada, California. From the 20 now, the Bruins still looking to get on the scoreboard, and Brett Johnson remains in a quarterback. Throwing near side, no. and is he out of bounds? No, Trying to make bounds. the catch as far. He tried oh, to they keep gave one it to put him. in, and they say he did. Oh, maybe he did. He was kind of straddling that out of bounds marker. He was dragging the foot. I just, from up here, it looked like he drug the foot out before he got the ball. You'll see him right here down the bottom of your screen. He tries to keep his right foot down and in. Here's the ball. Yeah, he, he's in. He's in. He's got it. Good call, officials. Had to do the splits to do it, but Farr did that. He's such an aggressive receiver. He'll go after it. 15-yard gain to the 35. You remember his dad playing football? Yes, sir, Mel. Pass complete, and that will be close to another first down. Corwin Anthony, the tight end. Well, let's go to Cheryl Miller, and let's talk about another sport. All right, Gary, with me is Jim Herrick, the men's basketball coach at UCLA, and I spoke to Lou Henson last week at Illinois, and they were winning, but UCLA is having a tough time with against Arizona. Long day at the office, Cheryl, for our football group today, yeah. Well, tomorrow is a big day for you guys. They officially start the season. How does the team look? Well, we're young. We have uh, eight uh, freshmen and sophomore, but we're kind of excited about starting. We had a nice year last year, and, and our kids are excited, and uh, we're looking forward to a good season. How competitive will the Pac-10 be? Well, we had four teams in the NCAA last year, and uh, we were one of the top schools to have uh, top leagues to have kids drafted, and we lost a lot of good kids, but there are some great players in our conference again this year. All right. Thank Coach, and okay, sure. good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. By the way, John Wooden is having a birthday today. Dick, did you know that? Today no, he's 79 years is old. He really well, happy say, birthday, uh, John. Yep. What a great coach. Pass near side, and all of a sudden now UCLA starting to put some pieces together. Corwin Anthony on the receiving end. That's another first down to the 40-yard line. Chris Wright was over there to make the tackle. Jim Herrick is being very modest talking about that young team. Boy, what a great recruiting year he had at UCLA. Bruins will be tough. At the 41 now, first down. Two forty-nine left in the third, 35-0 Arizona. There's the draw handoff to Williams and didn't fool anybody. Maybe a yard. Let's go to New York. Here's Roger Twible. Thank you very much, Gary. You recall that Blair Thomas, the outstanding Penn State running back, missed all of last year with a knee injury. The knee looks pretty good on this play. 38 yards on the touchdown run. That put Penn State up 7-3 in the first quarter. Now against Syracuse in the third, they lead at 10-6. Meanwhile, in the Southwest Conference, Houston and Texas A&M, Andre Ware has been intercepted three times, and the Aggies lead it in College Station. Back to you, Gary. Roger, they run and shoot. They've slowed it down a little bit, the Aggies have. Here is Brett Johnson throwing be. to Reggie Moore. Interception, interception by Hammersmith. Oh, what an interception. Woo!
his second of the game. That looked like a completion, and all of a sudden, here comes number 15. One, uh, one official down there started with a call to completion. He didn't see the uh, safety coming out. Now watch this. Here he comes, number 15. He reaches out there. He pulls it in. Last week, he got the first interception in his senior career. Now he gets two today. Taking a look. 15 at the bottom of your screen. See him. He's watching the quarterback's eyes. He moves off to the left. He's going for it. Here he is. He oh. covered a lot of ground. Great response. Good quickness. Boy, they got to grade him on the dive there. Yeah. We got a change at quarterback now. George Malaulu is coming in at quarterback. He is a freshman red shirt out of Carson, a left-hander, and he gives off to Michael Bates, and Bates gets a couple of yards on the play. There he is, Malaulu. They really like this guy. In fact, there was a lot of support to maybe have him be the quarterback if Veal experienced some more difficulty. He will be the quarterback as he matures and gains understanding. I visited with him on the field the other day. He says the understanding is really starting to come. He felt he was going to be ready to play some today, and if it was a different kind of ball game and they had to throw the ball more, I think George would have been in the ball game. Gain of about two yards on the play, and Malaulu gives off to Strydnik. That's Mike Strydnik, and uh, he's across the 10 just barely. You know, the other thing about George is he's ambidextrous. Yes, he, he is. He can throw both right or left-handed. Now, he's only working on the right hand, but I understand, uh, I mean, working left-handed, but I understand he plays second base right-handed. Pitch is right-handed. That's quite a, that would really help you on the option, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, you would think it would. Plus, how about rolling out? Yep. Right now, he's getting some valuable playing time with 56 seconds left here in the third quarter. McGill goes in motion. Alulu giving off this time to Sapp. He is really quick. did not he? A yard short of the first down for the 15. The thing about Sapp, it reminds a lot of people of David Adams, who played here at Arizona, wore the same number, number two. I think Sapp is about the same height, probably not as heavy as Adams. There he is. If, they, if he is 164, that's soaking wet. I, I walked by him on the field the other day, but he was the Los Angeles City Player of the Year in 1988. He's quite an athlete. So they run out of downs, and Nice will punt to this guy far. 35 to nothing. Did you say he was going to punt it far? <laughs> He's done it far thus far. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kenny McPeters is going to snap the ball. That was pretty good. Here is the punt, and beautiful, Whoa, beautiful what punt. a beauty. Woo! And Mike Farr is going to just get it out of bounds of it. I think... So at the 25-yard line, that is an outstanding punt by Nice. We'll be back. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Arizona Stadium, Terry Donahue on the left, Dick Tomey on the right. And the guy on the right is really having a big day as Arizona leads 35 to nothing. Terry's probably wondering if they added an extra quarter to this game. <laughs> 15 minutes left to go as we start the fourth quarter. UCLA has it, first down to 25. Out to the 30-yard line, a gain of about five is Sean Wills. Bruins in the 80s when trailing after the third quarter. Seven wins, three losses. Today, that's a, that's a, that'll, 35 points to make up to break even. Boy, if you're Terry, you got to think about just having some success to build for next week then. And of course, again, they're in danger of having the NCAA record streak of 210 straight games scoring a point snapped. Johnson throwing and complete to far. Makes a nice move. He's to the 46. Alexander and Salem on the stop. Hammerschmidt also over there. Look at the total yards here for Arizona. 363 yards. Third quarter statistics, UCLA 97. Wow. Look at the turnovers, too. Yeah. Four interceptions and a fumble. Well, you know, Arizona came in here plus seven in turnovers. I mean, they've taken it away seven more times That's uh, than they've given it up. First down at the 46 of Arizona after that completion. Up 25. 
Sean Wills. Wills starting his second game today and then not seen a lot of action since early. Salem and Case combining on the tackle. Wanted to mix it up, get some ball control going, and uh, I'll tell you what, none of that's happened. They didn't mix it up, they muffed it up. Yep. <laughs> Four times they've turned it over. At the 39, second down. Three yards going on this one. Wills again, first down. I really like this Wills. I watched him play last year. He can make you miss, and he can make the cutback run. He has, he's an enthusiastic, intense kid. I think he's uh, really a, a leader, and he played in the California Shrine game. A lot of these players have played in the Shrine game. Randy Austin played in the Shrine game. Corwin Anthony played in the Shrine game. And uh, that's a really a great honor to play in the California State Shrine game. He set a record last year for UCLA freshman running backs, gaining 622 yards. First down for the 34. Brett Johnson dumps it off to Wills. To the 30. See those footwork? To the 28-yard line. Geyer over there in case. And UCLA's worst defeat for Coach Donahue was against Nebraska in 1984. It was 42-3. to 42-3, and that was such a big win last year when UCLA beat Nebraska. Right. Well, they came, came in here to play this game last year, the number one team in the country. That's right. UCLA did. Boy, the Pac-10 has changed. When I was in it, you only had about four teams that could compete. Mike White at Cal, of course, was very good at uh, USC, University of Washington, and then the other teams weren't as competitive. The balance. Here comes Wills. See that move? Yes, sir, and that's a first down run to the 16-yard yeah. line. This good. reminder again, the World Series getting underway. Game one, 8 o'clock Eastern right here on ABC. Line of scrimmage to 17 yard line. Well, they show you what you're talking about, Dick, is that Arizona's got a tough trip to go to Washington State oh, yeah. next week. There's no breathers. You could play one great game and then go for three weeks playing people that couldn't beat you unless you as a coach fouled it up. Not anymore in the past 10. You have to play every week and you have to be good. UCLA trying to get on the scoreboard. Johnson. To the goal line, it's picked off. It's Lewis. Darrell Lewis, that's a fifth turnover. And we have a penalty flag thrown way over at the 30-yard line. Singleton was tangled up with Sean Wills. Some pushing and shoving going on. We're going to have an unsportsmanlike call against somebody. Boy, and Singleton is really hot about it. He took his helmet and flung it to the far side. That's not going to have any effect on the interception. No, it won't. And it's a personal foul against UCLA. From what I could see, they were kind of stomping on him over there. <laughs> Here it is. It was a nice post pattern, a well-thrown ball. You're going to see the interception to the right side of your screen. Now, Darrell Lewis comes right in underneath, right there, played it perfect. And as the secondary coaches have told us here, and as Larry McDuff told us, he is our best pure corner. Now, Darrell Lewis was a running back, played running back for a year, a year and actually ran the ball and did a good job. Four interceptions by Arizona. Sets it up now at the U of A 26-yard line. 35 to nothing, the Wildcats. So Darrell Lewis with a big move on the goal line area, picking off Johnson's second pass of the afternoon. He threw that with authority. He doesn't like this now. He knows he's got to make the tackle here, and look at him. He's a young man. He won't throw many of those in his career as he matures. He has seven for the year, two today. Bonds also has two. It's driving the fullback carries for a couple of yards. Second down and eight. UCLA still in danger of having that streak snapped. And here's what's happened. Three plays punted, seven and a fumble, interception, interception. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I, I, I would say when this is over that Coach Donahue is going to make the statement that he's never had a team play so ineptly. Well, he was feeling that way, I think, a little bit about Tennessee, too. Remember? Yeah, but Tennessee, it was proved everybody to be one of the best teams yeah. in the country, too. That's true. But I think at that time he wondered. Yeah. Now he's wondering again. He had a lane. sap. Sap out to the 45, first down. And there are some of the uh, ways you fight that dehydration problem. All those cups, it's hot. And I tell you, if you're UCLA, it's a lot hotter. 
You know, they block that play as you block it with chalk on the blackboard. They just blocked it just as you draw it. Here it is. Here's the tail of the play going out of bounds, going right over there in. There goes the, the cold drinks. Oh, oh, crummy. <laughs> sure, Bob, they know. Take that out of the scholarship. 18-yard run. Alula on the option, pitches to Sapp. Oh, face mask. Boy, he got clothesline, didn't he? They didn't call it. Pat was over there. I don't know if they got the face mask or just hit him around the helmet. But Sapp, along with Bates, some of these freshmen they've recruited, they're going to have some outstanding skilled people. You know what they're doing real well with the option is making a great fake inside. Look at the trees, the linebackers, everybody inside. Now they get, there's no one out there inside out pursuit. There's Marcus. Patton, number 49, and he was a step late. Patrick Bates was over there as well. He was the guy, I think, that caught him around the shoulder pads. Freshman out of Galveston, in Texas. Gained nine yards, second down a yard to go. And getting the first out of Strydnick, he's to the 40. Bates on the stop. It's as though everything Arizona wants to run, they can do right now. Well, you know, defense is more than physical. Defense is emotion. Defense is intensity, flying around the field. And UCLA has not had that today. They came in here a team that had forced a, a team to run 35 plays for a touchdown. They haven't done that today. Well, they were able to beat Arizona State at home last week, but their second game against a team from the state has certainly turned the other way on them. Ten minutes left in the game. 35 to nothing, Arizona with the lead. Malaulu pitching back to Sapp. See, you know, the other thing that happens, you say UCLA, you say Coach Donahue, and you automatically assume 10, 11 wins, 12 wins. Nothing like that happens automatically. And there are going to be times from year to year that you're not quite as good as you were when you won 10 football games and won seven bowl games in a row. You, the people take you for granted and just assume you're always going to be that good. Well, here's the winningest coach in the history of the Pac-10, and right now getting him. And one of the best. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, he's a heck of a football. One of the best I've ever been on the field with. He's had three 10 victory seasons. Seven, nine victory years. <laughs> oh, here it is, six Honolulu, points. The left-hander, wide open. Oh, gun fidetomy, and he can't quite get to it. Oh, gun fidetomy, and Eric Turner with a good defensive effort. I like that Eric Turner. I think he's a, a real football player. I'm sure that's not a surprise, but I only got to do one of the games last year. But he's he's always around the football. Here it is. They had a play action pass. He's playing the safety position. He looks back for the ball. He's right in proper position. Actually, Fidetomy prevented, prevented me prevented the interception. Just call him double O. I'll just call him gun. Oh gun Fidetomy. Third down coming up. Gill in motion. Over the quarterback. Oh, the great blocking. Wow. First down. Whoop. Argo and Turner on the stop. I don't know who that, that big fullback, 33, Mike Sridenick, he went through there on an isolation play. And I'll tell you, he's a walk-on. He didn't even have a scholarship. He just plays football because he loves the game. They tell me he absolutely sets the example in toughness on this team. Look at that. Houston got beat. You won't see them on TV this year. And m that's a big win for R.C. Slocum. Hand off to Strydnick. The ball comes loose, but it's been downed at the 23-yard line. Khalif Carter was there to make the stop. 8.39 left in the game, 35 to nothing. If you joined us late, it was 14 to nothing after one quarter, 28 to nothing at half. And the Wildcats build it to a 35-0 lead after three. And Washington, Oregon, big game. Washington's lost three in a row now. We did their opening game against Texas A&M and thought they were an outstanding team. Shows you how much I know. On a second and eight. They're just absolutely knocking them right off the ball. That time, poor Brian Kelly had roller skates on. They were knocking him off. That's Reggie McGill, really an underrated football player out of Phoenix. He was a player of the year his senior year in the state. Just the kind of guy that's unselfish, very steady, not flashy at all. But boy, are they glad to have him on the team. I know it. Both of his parents went to Arizona State. 
<laughs> Looks like he made a good decision. <laughs> well, Arizona's unbeaten seven years in, against Arizona State, their rivals to the north. Dick Tomey will build this as he's already done, and he's only been here three years, but he is an unbelievable recruiter. Unbelievable, because he is so sincere and he comes across sincere. And uh, the parents like him. You know, and Donnie was the same way. That's why he's been winning all that. Yeah. You've got to recruit. Boy, do you ever. And recruiting is fun. I used to really enjoy meeting the parents of the athletes. I met so many nice people. There's Terry's record just to show you how effective he's been. By the way, for Arizona right now, they have 421 yards rushing. Now, they led the Pac-10 last year in rushing, but not using this kind of offense. Well, they came into the game averaging 163. Malaulu is able to get the first down on the sneak inside the 15-yard line. This reminder, the conclusion of this game will select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game, and for the 19th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. Boy, for Arizona, I guess uh, David Eldridge might be a pretty good pick for that, huh? Well, I don't, don't go out in the limb so early. <laughs> we got him started, and I mean in a big way. Scoring two touchdowns back in the first quarter. This is Sapp. Oh, he's quick. Look at this. He's still going. Touchdown. Here it is. You talk about a little tiny guy. Nobody wants a piece of him. Everybody's waiting for somebody else to make the tackle, reaching and grabbing. I'll tell you, that's terrible tackling and great running. Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I right. agree. You have Gene Bullenogel coach this young man at Carson High School. Gene, you ought to be proud of him. Half point after, 42 to nothing. Wow. Woo. If people are seeing this score, they're going to think it can't be true. Believe me, it is. Old Main, the oldest building on campus, the Catalina Mountains in the background in Tucson, Arizona. What a magnificent setting. And this guy, Sapp, made it even more magnificent for Arizona fans scoring from 14 yards out. That's John Brandom on the right, the big offensive guard, number 63. He's from Riverside Pauling. I was talking to him the other day on the field. I said, John, I recruited a kid from out of high school. I gave him the name. He said, do you remember him? He said, what year was that? And I said, 1970. He said, coach, I was three years old. <laughs> I'm getting old, Gary. Rich Fall is kicking off, barefooted. So we're going to see some backup people with 725. Kickoff comes to Brian Brown, and Brown to the 31. Let's go back from the end zone and watch this touchdown run by Sapp. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this. You watch what an effort. Now, not good tackling, good blocking, not good tackling, but this is just a little guy, 160 pounds. He makes a man miss here. Look at this. Eric Turner misses right there, getting the shoulder padded. He just keeps going. And there, what's his name? Uh, just reaches with the arms. Again, reaches with the hands. Number three, Carlton Gary. Oh, those little guys, you got to get your arms around. Well, he, along with Bates, were two of the heavily recruited players. They have another guy by the name of Lovett, who they like a lot out of the L.A. area. He is stockpiling some running backs. First down from the 31. 7-19 left in the game, 42 to nothing. Jimmy Bonds has come back in a quarterback. Hits Corwin Anthony, the tight end, first down. So Johnson couldn't get him on the scoreboard, and Bonds comes in for the second time today. Well, it's a good time to get him some playing experience in game conditions. You know, it was dead even until they had a big team scrimmage in the Rose Bowl, last scrimmage, and Bonds did not play real well, and Johnson did, so Johnson got the job. But yeah. Johnson's been around football all his life. His dad was a high school football coach. He played for him in, uh, El, Toro. Know, in El Toro High School and, and a very fine football coach. He'll come back. 6.59 left in the game, first down at the 47 of Arizona. Bonds to throw. Boy, he does have an arm. Yes, Complete to Arbuckle. Nice delivery, nice quick delivery too. Yards short of the first down. The other game on ABC, that's stayed that way a long time, hasn't it, 10 to nothing? Yep. Michigan, that way Michigan State. Michigan State, 
can't quite throw the ball well enough to, to, to beat that kind of football team. And that's the team, Michigan, ladies and gentlemen, that's the team that UCLA actually had beaten till the final, you know, remember the onside kick and all that? Yep. Field goal. Second and two. There's a draw handoff to Ryan Brown, and Brown has the first down. He has an old flash about him, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a slasher. Yeah. Curtis Wright made the stop, or Chris Wright. Dick, let me ask you something. Here's Terry Donahue. He became head coach at UCLA at the age of 32. 14 years later, getting beat like this. That's tough. Well, I'll tell you, losing never gets any easier, regardless of how much experience. The only thing I ever worried about Coach Donahue and Terry, is, and as close friends as we are, is that you get a job so young, at the prime of your career in your mid-40s, hey, you've been doing it a long time. It's got to wear you out a little bit. I wonder if you have any adrenaline left. Here is Bonds throwing near side, and Moore almost dropped it. Hangs on. Out of bounds at the 16-yard line, and that's a first down. Jimmy Tucker, 27, made the stop. So Bonds somehow trying to get this goose egg off the scoreboard for UCLA. Well, every pass, every for every pass he, that was the ratio in high school, every 12th pass he threw was a touchdown. So he knows where the end zone is. I mean, he can get it in the end zone. Kids come out of high school in good passing attacks now, much further along and more sophisticated in the passing skills and total pass offensive schemes. Especially in the good weather areas like California. Here's a give to Brown, going wide. 10, 5 to the 3. Drop there, first and goal. William Dixon on the stop. You say to yourself, what's at stake? Well, no one wants to get shut out, but also they want to keep that NCAA record going. 210 straight games they've scored in. UCLA has scored 11 of the 14 times inside the 20. It's a little insignificant right now. Inside the five, first and goal. And Miller and Moore yeah. split to the near side. Jimmy Bonds giving off. Brian Brown, and he's to the three. Chris Wright again on the stop. Also, Arneth Mobley. I'll tell you, the big sophomore offensive guard, Mark Wilder, number 69 for UCLA, just found out what it was to line up in front of a defensive lineman that didn't want to be blocked. He really gave him. He stuffed him. Coming in now is the biggest fullback in the world, Kevin Smith, 6'4", 251. He's number 23. He is a monster. He played for Tony Fidel at Skyline High School in Oakland, California, up in the East Bay area. Second and goal just outside the two. Anthony in motion. Let's see if they give it to Smith. Oh, they're going to oh, back did, and stand. You see that Brian block? Brown is in for the touchdown. Woo! Kevin Smith's block. Watch the big fullback's block on the right side of the screen. Here he is. He's going to block like, look at that. Boom! <laughs> That looked like the shot that when they put the refrigerator in the, at fullback position in the Bear games a few years back. He just annihilated that guy. Oh, holy mackerel. Put him in, coach. Let him block. <laughs> so they saved their NCAA record. Now they're at 211 games. Of scoring at least one point. Velasco adds a point after. It's 42 to 7. 4-14 left to the game, and having a few wounds, UCLA. 42-7, UCLA gets on the scoreboard with 4-14 left in the game. Brad Deliuso will kick off. Going back deep is Sapp, who just scored a touchdown a moment ago. Well, next week, UCLA goes to Oregon State, then they catch Washington at home, and the Wildcats have to go up to meet Washington State, and that'll be a tough outing for Dick Tomey's team. You bet it will. The, you know, University of Arizona beat them last week in a shootout, or last year, rather, and, uh, like, had them, they both scored in the 30s. It was really up and down the field type game. Can you believe this guy kicking off? It's so far, it's yeah. not even close. I know. Now, look at that. Michigan State scored, so George Perlis's team is still in that one. Washington, Washington, they need that one. They've lost three in a row, and Oregon, of course, was the team that upset Arizona two weeks ago. We have some different people in yep. here, Coach. 
It's now a new quarterback in the ball the game. Coming in is going to be Stuart Betty. Betty. Stuart Betty, is it? I think it's Betty. B-E-T-T-Y. He gives off to Sap. Sap only 164, but look at him move the pile. I tell you, he's impressive little son of a gun. Out across the 25, Brad Bryson made the stop. Carson High School has probably turned out as many fine football players as any high school in the country. We go into the Big Ten and we find kids from Carson High School. Sapp has 72 yards on a touchdown. So Arizona has really done some job here today. 342 left. Boy, the Wildcats said they want to take their program to the next level and they have done that today. Hand off this time. Look at this. They still have and he's still on his feet. He just won't go down. Look at this. First down. That is just indicative of the effort of this Arizona team. Now, there's one guy, Dick, that I thought really showed us, and we're going to bring it up a little bit, the, in, the real intensity of this team. It's this man, but also Jeff Hammerschmidt. But we're going to talk about him in a moment. Look at now the play. He just keeps ricocheting off. With bounce, boom, bounce, out. There he goes. Oh, gets a block. Oh, pulls out of that one. Oh, going to pull out of Argos. <laughs> Oop, keeps running right there. <laughs> Nobody wants a piece of the action. 16-yard <laughs> gain. I, I, I tell you something. I wouldn't want to go to practice on Monday. <laughs> Hand off to Sapp again. And look at this guy. Just keep fighting. Now, I want to watch the eyes of this guy. We're going to have him coming up here. Here's Hammersmith. See him? Now, we talked to him and asked him what today's game means. Here's what he had to say. This game means any shot for a Rose Bowl, any shot for what we wanted, what we wanted at the beginning of the year. It's, it's what we wanted, and, and uh, if we don't get, if we don't get to the Rose Bowl, we did haven't satisfied ourselves. And I think to get to the Rose Bowl, we have to be UCLA. So if we don't be UCLA, we're not satisfied with anything. That kind of sums it up. That is looking good, isn't it, though? Yeah. The hammer. He's out of Helix High School in San Diego. That's the same high school that produced Chuck Cecil, the All-American here at Arizona, who's now playing for the Packers. He also played in the State High school, uh, Shrine game in California. I can remember as a recruiter for Stanford and UCLA having going some... that Shrine game and when watch those kids play. They all go on with football scholarship. Dick, what we're having right now is some problems with the clock. 3.23 left to go, and... Terry can't get it to run faster. <laughs> oh. Wow. Timer, please put 3.02 on the clock. Well, it's less time instead of 3.23. By the way, Arizona now, up to date, George Hill, our statistician, hands us this. 65 carries, Dick, for 466 yards. Oh, gee, yes, I mean, that is total domination. And they have started this game effectively, and they're ending it very impressively. Plains of backup people, and, boy, that's a great situation for Dick Tomey. Betty, the Draw. quarterback, gives us Stridenick, our big it's 33 a fullback, and he's just dragging people and moving them around. Mark McGill eventually was able to get in his way. He has another first down. <laughs> Coach Tommy has got to be happy. He is one of these guys that doesn't change his demeanor very much. One day, we had a recruiting party at my house. Big pool deck right there. And he was explaining a lot of things about the program and all that. He had a coat and tie on. It was a Sunday morning. And he backed off and fell right into the swimming pool. So help me God, the players go crazy. He gets up out of the pool, shakes himself off, and goes right on with his conversation as if nothing happened. <laughs> he wouldn't acknowledge the fact that he fell in the pool. First down at the 42. Sap again. A flag on the play. He is dropped. By the way, they're approaching a record. UCLA, the most yardage they had given up rushing-wise was 477 yards to Nebraska in 83. Here's Holding. That'll bring that back. Prior to that last snap, they were at 466 and counting. So Arizona could set a new rushing record against the Bruins. You know, in, in talking with Holding, Terry last night. Offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. He said there were three things that really concerned him about... Uh, the game and preparation with Arizona. Number one was dealing with the, the heat from a mental standpoint. Number two was the uh, trying to negate University of Arizona's one extra week of preparation. And three, uh, being on the road in a, in a real intense atmosphere before something his team hadn't been on. All right, did he accomplish any of those? Zero, flunked the test. That's right, 0 for 3, 0 for 3. 
he was concerned about the environment, and I think Brett Johnson being inexperienced, it may have affected him a little bit. 204 left in the game. The penalty now makes it first and 20. Uh, did he fall down? Betty gets up and uh, to the 44. Well, continuing here on ABC, the World Series, the Oakland A's against the San Francisco Giants. The guys who like to go through the old bash routine when they hit the round tripper, and I don't know if you saw the home run by Canseco in the playoffs. It was, it just keeps going. And then on Monday night, there's Jim Everett having a great year. Henry Ellard receiving those passes. Greg Bell running the ball well. The Bills have Jim Kelly hurt. I'll tell you, it is a real intense city to go in and play on a Monday night. I went in there with a team and played a Thursday night game, and both teams were undefeated in 1981. And I'll tell you, that city gets involved. Look at this guy, Stridman. He's like a Bramah Bull. He just keeps going and people bouncing off of him, and no one wants to get in his way. Arizona's offense has gained so much confidence today. They're going to want to hire UCLA's defense to go along with them for the, and play against them next week. <laughs> UCLA's calling timeout. Why would they call a timeout? They call timeout with 108 left to go. You know, that promo reminds me. How would you like to be Oregon State playing the Bruins next no week? No way, because, all, I mean, these kids have been shocked today. They've been embarrassed. The coaches have been embarrassed. They're upset. And I promise you, you will see an unbelievable football team next week. The game is still mental. The state game is still has a, an emotional aspect to it. And, and you say UCLA, I lack that today. I don't know why they call this timeout. I still can't figure it out. Third down now and about 15. By the way, Arizona now six, 480 yards rushing. That's a new record. The old record was 477 against UCLA and 83 by Nebraska. Betty running around. He wants to throw it. He never gets in a game. Well, this is going to be picked off. Nope. Out of play as coverage this time. Coming over there was Patrick Bates. And Gary, that'll bring up fourth down. Gary, don't you think we ought to uh, thank our statistician, George Hill, for what a great job he did keeping up with all those yards made today, George? Nice going. Nice going. About time you did a good job for us here. <laughs> Super job. And Bill Friel, our spotter. Bill actually cleaned his glasses off a couple times today. <laughs> You got to dress him better, though. That's no, all. I, Bill has spotted for the likes of Lindsey Nelson. That's right. By the way, Lindsey, a uh, nice article here in the game program about it. 70 year old gentleman, one of the class guys. Here's a snap now to Nice, and Nice will hit oh, it very high. Look at that ball. Boy, he just really hammers him, doesn't he? Yeah. Fair catch is called for by Mike Farr, and we have 49 seconds left in the game. So the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, probably no real surprise. David Eldridge, 20 carries, 205 yards, two touchdowns. And then for UCLA, Craig Davis, 14 tackles, one for a loss. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. You know there is not that much difference in these two football teams. And in fact, if they played again next week, UCLA might turn around and beat Arizona. But you only get the one opportunity, and you better take advantage of it. Today, UCLA did not. It probably will cost them their Rose Bowl hopes. A couple teams have gone. UCLA went to the Rose Bowl once with two losses, right? Only two times in the 11-year history of the Pac-10 have they been able to lose two games and get to Pasadena on New Year's Day. There's a gift of, I should say, Bonds keeping the ball out to the 21. Two times, 81 was one of those years, Washington, and 85 was the other. Pat James is over there, number 88, to make the stop. But boy, I tell you what, that'll put USC unbeaten at the top of the Pac-10. Right. And Arizona has stepped back, as now UCLA. Boy, that kid, I like the way he throws Oh, he football. can throw it, wow. can't he? That's Arbuckle again out of Houston who started his first game. He's been having a lot of knee trouble, and they're going to the hurry-up offense. Eight seconds left. The crowd standing and applauding this effort by Dick Tomey's Wildcats. The Cats did bear down, and the Cats won big. The last play, the pass completed to Moore, and Moore is tackled, and the game is over. What a win for Dick Tomey. There's his daughter, Angie, coming up. And Terry Donahue goes over to greet his friend. It's been a long afternoon for Donahue, but for Dick Tomey, one of his biggest wins ever. No question about it. And this is the time you wish the guy wasn't your friend because there's no way to enjoy losing. Absolutely no way. So Arizona wanted to move to the next level, and they've done it, 42 to 7.
presents the great American torture test. We challenged the bone-numbing cold of northern Alaska and intense city traffic. Traveled coast to coast to the suffocating heat of Death Valley and passed with flying colors. Xerox, because extreme conditions demand